Space Station flight control room as we await the start of the Russian spacewalk 54A. We're looking de for departure time from the hatch from two Russian cosmonauts at 8.20 a.m. Central Time, 13.20 GMT, and we're looking at a six hour and 18 minute spacewalk today. 170 in the compartment and 0 0.38 in the chute, copy. You're seeing now a live view from the balcony camera inside the Russian International Space, Space State, the Russian Mission Control in Russia, in Koryov, Russia, outside of Moscow. Genius, how much time is left for the injector? One minute, 22 seconds. Copy. One thirty is pressure in the compartment and 0 0.38 inside the chute. Copy. After 70 millimeter mark. Expedition 67 Commander Oleg Artemyev and Flight Engineer Denise Matveyev, both of Roscosmos, will exit the station's space-facing POISE module. The primary objectives of the spacewalk are to relocate an exter external control panel for the arm, for the European robotic arm, from one operating area to another, and test a rigidizing mechanism on the arm that will be used to facilitate the grasping of payloads. Artemia will wear a Russian Orlin spacesuit with red stripes, while Matveyev will wear a Russian Orlin spacesuit with blue stripes. This will be the eighth spacewalk for Artemyev and the fourth for Matveyev. Today's spacewalk will complete unfinished tasks from a spacewalk in August, which was cut short after Artemyev's spacesuit showed abnormal battery readings about two hours and 17 minutes into the spacewalk. The battery has been replaced and tested. During the previous spacewalk, Artemyev and Matveyev completed the installation of a pair of cameras on the arm and removed parts attached to the arm's end effector before the spacewalk ended. The end effector is the hand or the grasping mechanism that's attached to the European robotic arm. The European robotic arm, which launched last July, attached to the Nyoka module, will be used to move payloads and equipment outside the Russian segment of the station. Joining the Canadian-built Canada Arm 2 robotic arm and the Japanese arm already supporting station maintenance, operation, and research. Oleg uh, should get the exact same message. Um, pressure is module pressure notable. Point thirty six for EV one and EV two. Copy. Um, that's good. Module pressure is four zero point point thirty six point thirty six for uh, even one and two copy and uh, uh, we are uh, past twenty millimeter mark. Okay, stand by uh, the uh, stand by for uh, the message that the SS is in the. Module pressure is three zero. Copy.
Uh, we are at the 20 millimeter uh, pressure mark. And if you're just joining us, this is a live view from inside the Russian Mission Control Center in Koryov, Russia. Today, a spacewalk f from Commander Ar Oleg Artemyev and Flight Engineer Denis Matveyev will complete some upgrades to the European robotic arm. In preparation for today, the, the duo prepared Orlans, or the suits you see them wearing, successfully performed leak checks and voice and telemetry, telemetry testing on August 30th. On the 31st, the crew studied work zones and prepared tools and add-on hardware. Currently, the crew is in pre-breathe. Just over an hour, the crew began, just over an hour ago, the crew began pre-breathing. This is the activity before spacewalks, where the crew is working to remove nitrogen from their systems. This first will then entail them in breathing 100% oxygen while in their suits just through a mask and then done to purge nitrogen from their bodies. The next portion of pre-breathe consists of crew members being in their suits and they'll complete light exercise. We are still looking for the crew to be on time today and they are supposed to be headed out of the hatch around 8.20 a.m. Central Time. Okay, the module pressure is valve closing, uh, KSD, the press valve, KSD2 valve, it is now closed. Again, the primary objectives of the spacewalk today are to re relocate an external control panel for the arm from one operating area to another and test a rigidizing mechanism on the arm that will be used to facilitate the grasping of payloads. Standby. 11 millimeters. Copy 11. Uh, so please start the five minute timer. It's on. Copy. Some other planned tasks for the, gr the duo today as they exit will be to install work platforms on NIOCA, relocate the European robotic arm external control panel, adjust and test European robotic arms end effector grasp capability, remove a launch restraint on one of the European robotic arms end effectors, and time permitting, they will jettison launch restraints and protective covers, and they will extend one Straya boom from Zarya to Poisk.
This is the 253rd EVA in support of ISS assembly and maintenance and upgrades, the 8th EVA from the ISS in 2022, the 5th EVA for Expedition 67, the 8th EVA for Artemiev, racking up 45 hours and 45 minutes of EVA time in seven previous spacewalks. This is the 4th EVA for Matveyev, having 18 hours, 20 minutes of EVA time in three previous spacewalks. Artemiev is wearing the Orland spacesuit, being EV-1, and he'll be in the red stripes. Matveyev is EV-2, wearing the Orland suit with the blue stripes. Uh, Oleg, uh, please swap Q car 7, step 11, switching to uh, Orlan of standalone power. Yes, I'm ready. Oleg. Oleg, yes, go ahead. Oleg, what is the current pressure gauge reading? Yes, for temperature control handle. Uh, I think the pressure is too, uh, I mean the temperature is too high. Please select two for temperature, uh, because you're going to disconnect uh, uh, pretty soon. And, well, yes, it is set to zero now. Oleg, please report the uh, current pressure reading. And Oleg, please Set it to 1, and the pressure is 10. Copy, 10. Okay, so please open cue card 7, step 11. And the first uh, step is the preliminary cool down uh, prior to uh, the meeting. Or long cool down. Okay. Like if you're ready, uh, you're going to uh, start shot 11, cue card 7, switch into a uh, standalone power. Uh, you're going to put it in work. Copy. All right, so let me open the procedure. Uh, we're going to deactivate the pump and the fan, release com button, and we will be switching it to me. If you're just joining us, you're seeing a live view inside the Russian Mission Control Center in Koryov, Russia, outside of Moscow. Today's actions will be for a Russian spacewalk 54A, where a duo of Oleg Artemiev and Denise Matveyev will head out the hatch and head to a work site where they'll continue preparations for the European robotic arm. Main objective to replace and remo to remove and replace a control panel and to uh, adjust uh, 
to test the rigidizing mechanism on the ineffector of the European robotic arm. We are currently looking for the duo to head and open the hatch, head out of the hatch um, at 8.20 a.m. EV2 switch to standalone power, EV1 switch to standalone power, copy, and uh, prime pamps and fans are running to both of you guys. Is that correct? Yes. What about voltage? 31.8, 31.1. Copy. That's good. Let's move on. Uh, yes, uh, uh, use the EVA uh, control panel uh, to deactivate the kit exchanger, uh, copy that, and uh, uh, set one. We are currently standing by for the depressurization of the Poisk airlock shortly down to vacuum, and we'll set the stage for the final communications and system checks for the two cosmonauts on their Orland spacesuits and the opening of the hatch to the Poisk module module that will mark the official start of today's spacewalk. Okay, so now disconnected. Copy. Um, make sure that uh, the electrical uh, connectors are all cut. Okay, they're all cut. Okay, so uh, the next is a uh, uh, fluid umbilical uh, disconnection. Yes, Be made. Okay, uh, let me still the present. Denise, if you can, check the display. Uh, if I understand it correctly, uh, the main tank of pressure uh, and voltage are at what values? 4.05, and uh, the voltage is 30.8. And what are you seeing on the left, on the left counter? What number is it? It is at zero for now. Copy. Uh, Oleg, is it the same for you? Uh, yes, the counter shows zero. And what about the top line? Uh, what does it show? 403. And what is the voltage? Voltage is 30.2. Okay, please put the SS interface unit to 020 uh, closed position. Okay, BSS to uh, closed. Is it the top of button one? Open. So please rotate it clockwise. Uh, yes. Uh, please select close, close for oxygen, and put it to lock position. And uh, now uh, you need to install storage cats on fluid umbilicals. Copy. Go ahead and install uh, storage caps on your fluid umbilicals. Okay, uh, very capped. Oh. All right, Denise, what is the current of Orlan pressure gauge pressure reading? Point three six and point three six for EV one and EV two copy that's good and also once you install the storage cap to on of what fluid umbilicals make sure that you also um close uh, cover fluid umbilicals with the uh, MLI flaps. Okay, uh, it is now done uh, and please secure it all. 
Okay, it is all covered. Copy? That's good. So, all right. Uh, we got it all done. Great job. Uh, I'll hand it over to Artem. Good luck with your EVA. And uh, I'm going to talk to you again at free press. Thank you. All right. Uh, we'll be standing by. Oleg, Denis, Sergey, good day to you. This is Artem. Hello, Artem. Uh, so we're done uh, with uh, the press, and uh, we are ready to start the EVA. So first of all, I'd like to make sure that all of the uh, tools and equipment, everything is tethered and secured. Correct. Copy. And uh, what about the suits? Are they also um, tethered, secured? Yes. Correct. So you're going to start opening the EV hatch. And Denise, you're going to retrieve the hatch tool and uh, start moving the moving it to the um, operating position. Okay. Uh, Tool is installed. Uh, checking out the um, emergency lock cell. They're open. And they're in the same plane, uh, facing each other, ready to open the hatch. Uh, copy your go. Oh, it is open. Uh, the rollers are out. Not engaged anymore. Uh, Denise, also, as uh, soon as uh, you see an opening, please report. So it is open uh, now. Alec, what is the pressure reading? Well, I uh, uh, let me uh, check that. I'll report it later. Okay, uh, Denise, you can use the uh, hatch pressure tool. Okay, so hatch is uh, open. And uh, I'll go ahead and remove the uh, safety tether hooks, and you can uh, hand it over to Oleg. So do you need the pressure reading? Uh, okay, so... Um, it is uh, secured to uh, panel 2-1 bracket copy, and now on to the protective ring. Stand by. You can uh, float away. So what is it? So I'm going to retrieve it now. Retrieve the protective ring. Uh, please, uh, please repeat your loss. Ah, 
слушай, можешь что поменять? Там кольцо прожинит. Окей. So, uh, could, could you please move it back? Uh, because uh, it's uh, for the, the ring is uh, pushing back. So, okay. Uh, yes, it got over there. Can you move it like this? Yes, please pull. Pull, pull more. More. So there it goes. That's it. Okay. You can take it now. Okay. Okay, so go ahead and hand over the protective ring. Yes. I can see it. So is it like this or like that? No, uh, not like that because uh, the finger it will be uh, too tense. Like this? There, there it goes. It is installed uh, pretty well on my side. Okay, please wait. Hold on. Okay, got it. If you're just joining us, you've now joined the, you're seeing live views inside the Russian International Mission Control Room where they're controlling today's operations of the Russian Spacewalk 54A. Denise, please start egressing from MRM towards the operator post. Inward. We are going to be in insulation in two minutes. One hook is attached outside. When Shall we Currently in an orbital night time, two Russian cosmonauts exited the hatch at 8.25 a.m. Central Time, 13.25 GMT, and we're looking at a six-hour and 18-minute spacewalk today. Makes this call. Alec, Denis, you're still in the airlock? Expedition 67 Commander Oleg Artemyev and Flight Engineer Denis Matveyev, both of Roscosmos, exited the space-facing Poise module and are headed to their work site on the MLM, or the Multi-Purpose Laboratory Module. Yes. Alec, Denis. Okay, I turned the, off the one on Denis's suit. Yes, go ahead, Gennady. Are you both in the airlock? If you're both in the ACR, airlock, can you repeat? Start, turn off your sublimators, taking turns. First EV2. Well, EV2 is a sublimator already off. Okay. Do the EV1 then. If you're just joining us, 
Good morning and welcome to Mission Control Houston. You are currently seeing a live view outside of the International Space Station. Today's operations are is a Russian spacewalk 54A where two cosmonauts exited the hatch at 8.25 a.m. Central Time, 13.25 GMT, and we are looking at a six hour and 18 minute spacewalk today. Expedition 67 Commander Oleg Artemiev and Flight Engineer Denise Matveyev, both of Roscosmos, exited the space-facing Poisk module. The primary objective of the spacewalk is to relocate an external control panel for the arm, the ro European robotic arm, from one operating area to another and test the rigidizing mechanism on the arm that will be used to facilitate the grasping of payloads. We are not getting a video, so please provide voice commentary for your kit operations. K1 hook is done. You take that hook. Got it. Closing this one. Just entering orbital daytime as the ISS flew 262 statute miles above the North Pacific Ocean. Hey, I'm passing you the second hook now. Okay, second hook is outside. Okay, now the cube. Okay, I am passing you a hook now. Okay. Gennady, is it possible uh, to have auto STR on? Yes. Please make sure. Heat cold switches in middle position. The two in zero and turn on. Leave it to have thermal can other thermal control on. Ditto EV1. Copy EV1, EV2. Okay, don't pull because I am not done with the second hook yet. Hold on. Okay, hook one attached. Okay, start retracting. You're now seeing great views in the center of your screen of Expedition. And here comes the second one. Mm -hmm. I got the second one. You're seeing Expedition 67 Commander Oleg Artemiev and Flight Engineer Denise Matveyev.
Artemiev is wearing the Russian Orlin spacesuit with red stripes, while Medvedev is wearing the Orlin suit with the blue stripes. This will be the eighth spacewalk for Artemiev and the fourth for Medvedev. Today's spacewalk will complete unfinished tasks from a spacewalk in August, which was cut short after Artemia's spacesuit showed abnormal battery readings about two hours and 17 minutes into the spacewalk. The battery has been replaced and tested. During the previous spacewalk, Artemia and Martveyev completed the installation of a pair of cameras on the arm and removed parts attached to the arm's end effector before the spacewalk ended. So I put it here, as you wish. The European robotic arm, which launched last July attached to the Nyoka module, will be used to move payloads and equipment outside the Russian segment of the station, joining the Canadian-built Canada Arm 2 robotic arm and the Japanese arm already supporting station maintenance, operations, and research. Uh, in this case, Oleg, please start executing as you are ready. Okay. We're currently in a brief handover between satellites and we'll have have camera views of the EVA back in just m a few moments. Okay, give me the fixed length one. This one goes outside. No. No, I cannot do it like this. You're currently seeing a live balcony view from the Russian International Mission Control Room in Koryov, Russia, outside of Moscow. I wanted to let you know that you are go to turn on helmet cameras once you're outside. Okay. Okay, both hooks are outside. Please check that there is no interference in my path. Right. Your go. Okay, EV2, gas temperature inaudible. Copy, Denise. Uh, but feeling fine. Uh, EV2 has two cameras. Okay, let's check my suit. Okay, one. We now have live views of the duo outside the Poise module. They're here gathering adapters. 
and then they'll translate over to their work site of the MLM or the multipurpose laboratory module, also known as NIOCA. Okay, it is on. Uh, can you help me turn on the light? Of course. The crew is currently in the process of turning on their HECA or their helmet cameras. We'll see those views shortly. Okay, I am next to you. And the second one. Got it. Both are on. Okay, uh, turn it on for me on that side. Okay, hold on. Okay, one more time. So the lights are... Make sure the lights are on. Okay, the lights are on. Copy. Talking over each other. No, we were doing the lights. Inaudible. Okay, I got the bag. Now we start translating to the ring. Genius, don't go too far. One hook is on the ring. Second hook is on the ring. Now pass me that. Here's one, here's the other. Uh, please watch me. Okay, let me untangle this a little bit. Inaudible. What did you say? As you translate, make sure you watch the status of the platform. It's massive and has to be uh, handled with care. Okay. So let me watch the part. Oh, actually, pass me the tether first. Okay. Hold, hold on. This is the tether for the platform, right? Yes, it is. Okay. Now watch, watch me execute. Now pass me your tether. There you go. A take this. Okay. Too bad you don't have a second pair of hands on the back. Hold on, hold on. I are you holding it? Uh, there's a bit of a spring action. 
Okay, pass me the second one. All right. Okay. Can you manage by yourself? Sure. All right then. Where is the cube? Oh, there it is. Uh, uh, you hold this and I will undo the ring. Okay, the ring is undone. Okay, so the tickets have been checked. The passengers have taken their seats. It's time to depart. Okay, off we go on the Strela. Okay, talking over each other. Yes, I will be following you. And you're currently seeing the helmet camera, uh, helmet cam 16 of Oleg Artemiev, and we know this is Oleg due to the red stripe, Orlin, the Russian spacesuit. Uh, are you there? No, I'm still with you. Okay, we are at the transfer point and we need to secure the ring. So we need to put it right here. Alec, remember, we need to... The duo is currently translating or moving to their work site, which will be the base point of the MLM or the multi-purpose laboratory module with the platform and adapters. We still need to get to the end. But if you go there, you won't be able to. The primary objective of the spacewalk are to relocate an external control panel for the arm from one operating area to another and test a rigidizing mechanism on the arm that will be used to facilitate the grasping of payloads. Okay, can you reach those handrails? Let me try. Hold on, let me uh, secure myself here. So we're going to attach to the to a Strela handrail. Artem, can we do this? Yes, you can even uh, use the use a lanyard. But why don't you try? We're seeing how much it can move, the wing nut. Well, the wing nut is tight, but I can release it. Yeah, give it a half turn to give for initial torque. Had a short LOS. Uh, 
Yeah, it was uh, tightened really well. Now it's in good config. Okay, we are now going back. After a brief reacquisition of the signal, we now see a view of the Russian cosmonauts outside of the International Space Station. If you look to the bottom left of your screen, An alternative would be to the duo is translating to the Nyoka module where they'll be working to move a control panel from one position to another. Inaudible. Oleg, Denis. Go ahead. For you, it is the same distance if you go via plane one or plane three. So, which route do you want? Well, we're heading back already. Okay. Let me turn around and then you will hand me these items. This one? Okay, I'm already here. Hold on, let me figure it out. Time to explore the new path since Artem gave us a go. Untangle this. Okay, I have translated to FGB. You can hand me the kit now. Okay. I mean the hook. Right, right, let me undo it. Please report the handrails you are attached to. I am on handrails 4010 4011 EV1 on FGB. Oleg, you are an MLM, right? Oh, yes, MLM. If you're just joining us, you're seeing live views outside of the International Space Station of the Russian segment. We're about 30 minutes into today's spacewalk, Russian Spacewalk 54A, where two cosmonauts exited the hatch at 825 a.m. Central Time, 1325 GMT. Expedition 67 Commander Oleg Artemyev and Flight Engineer Oleg and Flight Engineer Denise Matveyev are conducting today's spacewalk. Today's approved task, and currently where the astronauts are heading, is to their work site on the NIOCA module, or the Multi-Purpose Laboratory module. They will install work platforms 
relocate the European Robotic Arm external control panel, adjust and test the European Robotic Arm's end effector grasp capability, they will remove a launch restraint on one of the European Robotics Arm's end effector, and if time is permitting, they will jettison launch restraints and protective covers and extend one stray boom from Zarya to Poisk. Good job. Where did I put the second one? Oh, you can pass it to me and I'll attach it for you. Hold on to the ring. Oh, I thought you were uh, pulling it. Oh, you can just reattach. Okay, uh, like I said, hold on to the ring and pass me the hook. Okay. Okay, translate here. Okay. Now take the platform. Okay. okay, we're here on the hump, and we need to go right there. We currently have great views of the cosmonauts at the bottom of your screen as they translate to their work site. And we have a view of the European robotic arm. Okay. Keep now, going. Uh, let's activate the video. The first thing the cosmonauts will do will be to install a work platform on Nyoka. Please report your position. My handrails are 4006 and 4007. EV1. And uh, you're going over each other. forward, right? Yes. Stand by. Hold on, hold on. I'm at uh, plate 15. I can rehook you here. Okay, I have it. Rehook to 40-23. Copy. And the second hook on 40-21. 
We we'll have to hold on here a little bit. One uh, hook, one hook is uh, on the removable handrail. Forty-three twenty-one. One hook is on there. Adjustable. And I am monitoring. You hold on. Okay. I am monitoring the cube, and uh, you are translating. And the second hook is where? Are you able to see it? Yes, I am. Artem, are you able to hear? Are you able to see us? Not able to see you. You are on plane three already, completely. Yes, and keep moving. Now, you watch the cube, and I am moving it to the rail. Rail. So you are uh, on the way straight there. Dennis, give me this cube. Okay, now release, and I'm holding it. Now, over the hill here for the cube. Looks all right, looks all right. No, slowly, but don't put both hooks on the same handrail. We hook it this way. There are connectors here. Got it. 
I got it. Just keep 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 going. Uh give me space. I am ready for the cube. Okay, hold on. I do have it in my hands. And I am passing by the panel uh, with replaceable pumps. Copy pump panel. Alec, Denis, how is your thermal situation? Good. It's better and better. And we are on handrail 43, 20 to 27. And, uh, uh, okay, so you are looking and I am moving, okay? in work. And where are we? Got it. That's closed, that looks good, unintelligible. Let me try and move a bit away. I'll just get over here and be ready, okay? If you're just joining us, we are about 50 minutes into today's spacewalk, Russian spacewalk 54A, Expedition 67 Commander Oleg Artemiev and Flight Engineer Denis Matveyev ventured outside of the hatch at 8.25 a.m. Central Time, 13.25 GMT. Artemiev is wearing the Russian Orlin spacesuit with red stripes, while Matveyev is wearing the Russian Orlin suit with blue stripes. We are currently seeing HECA helmet cam views from Matveyev. Artemiev is helmet cam 16, Matveyev is helmet cam 20. 
This is the eighth spacewalk for Artemiev and the fourth for Matveyev. Today's spacewalk will continue unfinished tasks from a spacewalk in August, which was cut short after Artemiev's spacesuit showed abnormal battery readings. During the previous spacewalk, Artemiev and Matveyev completed the installation of a pair of cameras on the European robotic arm and removed parts attached to the arm's ineffector before the spacewalk ended. I understand. You are by Nauka Majo. And we see the cover that is to be removed. The European robotic arm, which launched last July, attached to the Nauka module, will be used to move payloads and equipment outside the Russian segment of the station, joining the Canadian built arm, Canada Arm 2 robotic arm and the Japanese arm, already supporting station maintenance operations and research. Let me catch it. The duo is currently translating to the base point of MLM, or the Multipurpose Laboratory Module, also known as NIOCA. I crossed over the gap. Okay. Let me hold it. Okay, holding it now. The first task will be to remove protective covers from the base point and install a work platform on Nyoka. Take the adjustable. The protective cover has been removed. On adjustable cord. Is it on the adjustable? Yeah, on red. At this time, I will secure it on my side. This will need to be rehooked. So, which hook? This one, and we'll swap them. Yes. Let me orient it, and I am holding it now. So, hold on, I'll take care of the hook. And yours as well. Okay. Where is the lock? Okay, I will be pressing, and you go ahead, press the lever. Okay. Okay, let me um, rehook again because I'm being pulled. Okay, stand by. Need a bit of time. Now you press. 
No, you're even a little bit ahead, almost minute, two minutes. How about resting just a little bit? Just make sure uh, all is secured and the locks are locked. And... Uh, Great. Okay. Now, rest a little bit. Just take care of the cover. Dennis, how about I give it to you? После того, как... После того, как вы освободите э, вот эти мягкие поручни и чехол, э, у меня просьба к вам ну, release... камеры, как установлена платформа с адаптерами. Хорошо. Use the Спасибо. Just make sure we have the image. Okay. And I am hooking up now. Okay. So we returned the protective cover. Now I'm removing the tethers. Now we finally get a picture with you. Okay, now take a look. But for the history, for the record, we want to have pictures. Okay, I'll work with the tether this time. Hold one and let me hook the other one. Just make sure it does not fly away. And the second hook, give it to me. Looking good. Now the other tether. Can you remove it from the other side? Possible? No, on my side only. Done. Great. Great. All tethers are in place. That's an interesting uh, tether. How inaudible. I think this one is working. Make sure the camera is working. This is... Hekka or, or which, which, Hekka, which one should I make sure it's working? Hekka, I think. Okay, I'll turn it on again.
If you're just joining us, we are about an hour into today's EVA or Russian Spacewalk 54A. You're currently seeing live views of the Russian International Mission Control Room in Koryov, Russia, outside of Moscow. Two cosmonauts, Expedition 67, Commander Oleg Artemyev and Flight Engineer Denis Matveyev ventured outside the hatch at 8.25 a.m. Central Time, 13.25 GMT. The duo have currently, they currently have translated to their work site and they've done their first objective, which was to um, remove protective covers at the base point of the multipurpose laboratory module or NIOCA and install a platform with adapters at the base point. The duo are currently translating to the European robotic arm. They are about five minutes ahead of their current timeline. That's great. Uh, so, uh, that's a birthday, Irina's birthday. She is a geography teacher. Okay, if you rested enough, Let's turn off the camera. And translate further. We are turning off the cameras. Just two, three seconds, and it will turn off. There should be a signal. Okay, uh, it's not blinking anymore. Okay, mine is not blinking either. Did you also? Record was below you. SM, the first plane of SM. Was it in the view when you were doing it? Well, actually, we have not, since you didn't ask. Uh, no, if you want, we can turn the cameras on again and do this. Yes, please. Okay. We don't have uh, images of the service module from this angle. All right, we'll do. Just a second. So in five minutes it will be dark, so you have enough time to take a picture. All right. That's all, uh, Alex. Thank you. That would suffice. Do you want a picture of the third plane of service module? Actually, when we go back to MRM, you will be able to take a picture at that time. Okay. Now we'll keep going the timeline. 
Okay, the camera is off. And keep going. And we are going to the control panel now. Yes. And it is close by. And here it is. Just taking care of this hook. Для этой работы с внешним пультом шпаргалки не нужны. Нужно будет перевести в режим шпаргалки. Для этого я сейчас ну, расскажу. I will tell you what exactly to do. We don't need any additional support to this one, and you will have to put it in the upper position. The diode should be lit up and, and on I'll go Мы находимся в зоне МДДК, поэтому еще раз напоминаю. The area here, and just a reminder: be careful. So I'm uh, in the required position. Go ahead and open it. Okay, opening the uh, outer noise cover. It is now open. Am I going to open it? Yes, you're on. Okay, it is now open. And Oleg, stand by for now. Copy. Okay, I'm not even going to look at it. Okay. On is eliminated. Yes. We received a go. If you're just joining us, we are one hour and five minutes into today's spacewalk, Russian spacewalk 54A, where cosmonauts Oleg Artemyev and Denis Matveyev are outside doing some upgrades for the European robotic arm. Which is in the uh, top. We just entered into uh, orbital nighttime as the International Space Station was flying 267 statute miles above the Indian Ocean. No, I haven't done anything yet. So what should I do first? Brightness. So please. Artemyev and Matveyev exited the hatch at 8:25 a.m. Central Time, 13:25 GMT. They then translate it to their first work site. 
what's next? And have now made it to their second after removing protective covers and going to the European Robotic Arms Control Panel. So uh, I have executed two steps. We're currently seeing helmet cam views from our team of suit. <laughs> okay, it is deactivated now uh, and LED is not illuminated. Okay, go ahead and uh, <laughs> cover it. His task will be to remove the European robotic arm from hibernation mode and turn it off. In work. Okay, cover installed and um, now installing the outer uh, cover. Outer cover installed as well. Artem, what's next? I guess you didn't copy. Uh, yes, we're standing by for now. Slushna. How do you read me, guys? I uh, copied that it is off. Yes, copy, Oleg. And, uh, uh, Denis, uh, your goal to make the launch base uh, point connectors, the latch uh, will now be unlatched. It is open now. Oleg, please hold it. Oh, and what is it? Okay, stand by. Okay, did you reconnect it? Uh, yes. It is demated, then the cover that was uh, secured is installed, and uh, I'm going to uh, hand it over to Oleg now, and uh, uh, then. I will start operations with the uh, connectors. Uh, so we need to pack up this cable. Inaudible. So I'm holding it. Let go. Do not tighten that too much. What was it? I'm saying do not tighten it too much, because it's fragile, as you remember. Okay. We're currently in a brief handover period between satellites. We should have views outside the International Space Station back for you shortly. Currently have a live view inside the Russian International Mission Control Room in Koryov, Russia, outside of Moscow. Oleg, Denise, uh, on uh, Shevsev, how do you read me? Loud and clear. Copy.
Так, кабель предварительно уложили. Okay, so uh, the cable uh, is uh, tempted. Copy. And one hook, I guess, uh, uh, should I attach it on my tether? Yes. You can drop it on your short tethers. So one of the hooks uh, is now secured. And uh, uh, the connector is capped. After installing a dust cap and removing the protective covers from the European robotic arm, the duo is now translating to the base point of MLM or the multi-purpose laboratory module. It is now demated from the lock. Denise, this is this one is yours. So we were transferring the adapter. Okay, all right, so let me uh, tether it first, and I'm going to uh, hold on to the control panel now. Okay, and also, as agreed, I use two points. The, uh, you can install uh, the uh, long one on the ring and the short one in audible. Okay, so the adapter is now tethered. Copy. You should pull it. Uh, the latch should disengage. Uh, it got stuck. I, yes, I see that it is sort of sticky. No, it's uh, moving now. Okay, go for it. Make sure that I uh, you don't uh, over. Is it tight? Yes, it is. It feels quite uh, tight. Okay, Oleg, please check if the bushing is uh, uh, sticking out or not. Uh, no, not yet. It should not. Uh, because a year ago, uh, we had a uh, similar, similar uh, nominal situation, so that's why I'm asking. Actually, it's out now. Okay, stand by. Uh, yes, I. Uh, can you see? It? Yes, I guess uh, you need to uh, press on the hook here to make sure it's retracted. All right. Uh, so uh, you can uh, <coughs> drop this hook on your tether. Got it. It's done. Okay, um, well, let me uh, take a breath here and uh, we'll keep going then. All right. Are you monitoring it? And inaudible. Uh, yes, uh, um, the flashlights, do we have them? Yes. And uh, Denise, uh, uh, did you attach the uh, safety hook uh, to your tether? Not yet. Okay. 
All right, I am uh, monitoring it. Okay, so I'm holding it. All right, so I have it now. You have it? Yes, correct. Good. All right. Uh, so we have reached uh, the adapter. Okay, uh, so let's uh, move this uh, box to the side now, make sure it's not in the way. There, are you watching it? Uh, I'm, I'm watching it. Do you have it? Uh, I have it. Uh, and uh, please make sure you're careful uh, with the target on the KRM adapter. Make sure you're monitoring it. Okay. Okay, so uh, did you uh, already move over here? Yes, uh, and the, the target is somewhere here. Actually, there are two, and please do not touch uh, either of them. Make sure there is no contact with the target. Copy. So we just uh, needed to um, deal with the cover here. It's on this side. Copy. Denise. I'm ready for the handover. All right, it's in work. Please be careful. Okay, so uh, pull towards yourself uh, and uh, uh, then rotate. Okay, so let me uh, reattach uh, my hook here first because uh, you, you can see what it's like now. Okay. Okay, so the target is here. 
Inaudible. Moving on. I am watching it now. Uh, all right. Uh, I'm going to start moving. Okay, Oleg, I uh, have already moved closer to you, okay? So let's uh, swap the tethers again, okay? I am um, monitoring it now. Okay, so we're next to 4108, uh, Henriel. Is it the location for the install as well? Yes, uh, you are going to install the tray adapter. If you're just joining us, you're looking at live view from helmet cam of Denise Matveyev, EV2, on today's Russian spacewalk 54A. Expedition 67 Commander Oleg Artemiev and Flight Engineer Denise Matveyev, both of Roscosmos, exited the station's space-facing poise module at 8.25 a.m. Central Time, 13.25 GMT. And we're looking at about a six hour and 18 minute spacewalk today. My recommendation is for you to... Artemiev is wearing a Russian Orland spacesuit with red stripes while Matveyev is wearing a Russian Orland spacesuit with blue stripes. Today's spacewalk is a continuation of unfinished tasks from a spacewalk in August, which was cut short after Artemiev's spacesuit showed abnormal battery readings about two hours and 17 minutes into the spacewalk. During the previous spacewalk, Artemiev and Matveyev completed the installation of a pair of cameras on the European robotic arm and removed parts attached to the arm's end effector before the spacewalk ended. Yes, 
The European robotic arm, which launched last July, attached to the Nyoka module, will be used to move payloads, equipment outside the Russian segment of this station, joining the Canadian-built Canada Arm 2 robotic arm and the Japanese arm already supporting station maintenance, operations, and research. We sat properly in position, uh, which is different from the hydrolog training. The duo have already completed one thing that's part of their planned task, which was install a work platform on Nyoka. The duo then translated over to grab the European robotic arm and turn off its control panels, turn it off on its control panel, and they are now in translation back to the base point of the multipurpose laboratory. So, uh, manual mode uh, would be sufficient. Okay, copy. All right, so uh, I am releasing the tether. Okay, Oleg, one, once you do it, could you please uh, reconnect the Erica uh, camera? It is. The primary objectives of the spacewalk are to relocate an exterior control panel for the arm for one operating area to another and to test a rigidizing mechanism on the arm that will be used to facilitate the grasping of payloads. I'll like make sure that uh, your safety tether is uh, still near uh, handrail 4108 uh, to avoid any issues in the future. Uh, yes, I got that. Denise. So I uh, have it. I'm holding it. Okay, let me move. You, you need to uh, rotate the control panel by 180 degrees. Uh, yes, indeed, we need to do that, but it's uh, too early for that because Denis is uh, still moving. And uh, his uh, hook is actually dropped on the other side, uh, so it's uh, the tether is extended. I can't do it now. Okay. All right, so here I am. Okay. So what we need to do is figure out the tether in here. Hold it, please. And I'm going to... The duo just completed their translation with the control panel. Next task will be to install a tray adapter and then install the control panel to its new position. All right. Not on my side, yes, exactly like this. Do you have the second tether? Okay, here it is. All right. Go ahead and have it over to me. Excellent. It did not uh, float away. Okay, now we need to engage this lock. So what, what's in the way there? Okay, there you go. Okay, half a turn. That's it. Okay, so the control panel is uh, set, installed. So now, 
Well, keep moving over there. Okay, I see it. Uh, okay, uh, I see the connector and uh, uh, the cap can be freely removed. It's all nominal. So, did you get a chance uh, to make phone calls uh, and uh, um, congratulate everyone? Sure. Okay, so this is the uh, connector, the uh, Perim con connector. Oleg, Dennis, how do you read me? Loud and clear. The uh, c control panel is installed, tethered, the uh, cable has been released. Okay, and we just received the go. Uh, to make the uh, connector. Uh, uh, please repeat your last. Uh, I I said X to connector. Uh, what about the uh, contact uh, surface? Is it nominal? Is it clean? Yes, uh, it is uh, clean. Looks nominal. I can see the connector now. Be careful. Okay, moving it to the end. Can it reach? Yes. We have to bring it to the end. Hold on. Check the latch. Well, they look nominal. Don't, they don't appear to be changed. Ball is aligned with the arrow. Did you, did you adjust it? No, it, it's, it's in the nominal position. What about the latch? The latch is open. Seems to be getting stuck there. And the latch is not closing as well. Is there a lock on the cover? Yes, it has a small latch. Uh, well, you need to co close that one and tighten it. Okay. Well, it is closed on one side, but not on the other. I'm maintaining... A ...matching configuration on both sides, so uh, the marks are aligned on that other side. Is this... Are you using the right connector? Yes. X2.
Now it's uh, pushing against uh, pushing against the wall, and now uh, am I supposed to latch it? Yes. Uh, okay, I'm uh, turning it over. Did it install? You're currently seeing live views from the balcony camera inside the Russian International Space Station. That is not right. You are currently seeing live views inside the Russian International Mission Control Room in Koryov, Russia, outside of Moscow. If you're just joining us, we are having a live spacewalk today for Russian Spacewalk 54A. Duo are Oleg Artemyev and Denise Matveyev ventured outside of the hatch at 8.25 a.m. Central Time, 13.25 GMT. The duo is currently installing a tray adapter for the installation of that removed control panel. Artem, a copy. Guys, we are experiencing uh, the primary objectives of the spacewalk are to relocate the ex that external control panel from one operating area to another and install it. And then they will test a rigidizing mechanism on the arm that will be used to facilitate the grasping of payloads. The shroud open. Do I need to open the cover? Yes. Denise. Please assist. Okay. Alex, Denis, go ahead. We, our com now is so bad that we will have a hard time executing off of cue cards. So, uh, Oleg, we want you to proceed with your task. And Denise, please assist by holding the cable. Okay, will do. Thank you. Denise, go ahead. Uh, can you please move the cable as far away from ERA as possible towards the external panel? Without kinks, of course. 
Нас, нас смущает вот эта петля, чтобы ЕР за нее не цепляла. We are a little bit concerned about the loop on the cable, because ERA can get caught in it. Okay, will do. Now, one hour and 44 minutes into the Russian EVA 54A, today Spacewalk will con complete unfinished tasks from Spacewalk in August. Prime objectives is to now install a control panel, remove from one sector to another, and then we'll be looking at a test to, at a rigidizing mechanism on the arm that will be used to facilitate the grasping of payloads. That's the end effector or that hand of that European robotic arm. Okay, one. So far this morning, cosmonauts have installed a working platform on Nyoka module, and they have relocated the external control panel. They are currently looking at hooking up cables for that control panel. Sergey, if you, if you can hear us, please call MCC on Space to Ground 1. Will do. Oh, we hear, Sergey. Again, that's after installing a tray adapter in the control panel. They're looking to sure. put in the cable at the base point for the control panel. Thank you. Looks good. Very good. Well, it's not every day that uh, we do something that Artem likes. Okay. Okay. Denis, you will have a bit of a time off. So maybe you can use this time to remove the LFM ring at the MM and uh, uh, then take the ring and secure it on the base point. Second gap spanner is installed between 4107 and 4125. Okay, uh, please position yourself at the external panel and we will start our ops. Looks like we have good com. So, do we need few cards? Yes, we do. We are going to initialize the EMMI on the internal bus. The cue card is inside the cover. Right now we're standing by for a go, and we'll pick, pick up our steps afterwards. Okay, Alec. We can start power switch to the on position. Complete. Copy. Do you want me to read the steps to you? Or do you want to do it yourself? Okay, why don't you read the steps to me and I will check them off. Okay. Step one. At the menu line has EMI config 
Confirm. Step two. Start stop switch to the stop position. Complete. Auto menu language selection. Complete. Start stop switch to start position. Complete. Switch in start position. Battery 1553 visible. Copy. Step six. Start stop switch to start position. E M M I I D visible. Copy. Step eight. Start stop switch to start position. Here, we will stand by for checkout and elimination of all displays. Yes, checkout in progress. We are standing by for MMI 110, etc. Copy, I see the message. Copy. Menu line should have the start stop switch check step. I see start and uh, the prompt to start start. Copy. Step 12, press start on start stop. Complete. Prompting to start stop. Should I start stop? Working with MCCM, that's Mission Control Moscow, Oleg Artemiev, EV1, is powering up the control panel. Then, yes. Start stop and stop position. Okay, prompted to press and emergency. Copy. Move the emergency switch to lower position. Complete. Prompting to move it back. Copy. Step 19, moving to the upper position. Complete. Copy. Right now, we're not getting FOR data after internal ops. Okay, we're about to send a command, so let's take a few moments to take catch a break. Uh, ta elapsed time 1.52, we are ahead by about 30 minutes. One hour and 52 minutes into today's Russian EVA or spacewalk 54A, the crew is currently reporting they are about 30 minutes ahead of the timeline. The duo is currently being seen outside the Nyoka module with the European robotic arm. They are currently installing a control panel that they removed from a different location and now are, are looking to work with Mission Control Moscow to get the control power the control panel powered on. Do you see those forest fires? Oh, that is impressive. Looks like it's the states. Yes, you're flying over the western coast of the U.S. Yes, we recognize it. Hey, 
прием, как слышно. How copy? Loud and clear. What are we doing now? Олег, we standing by for another minute. We expect FOR data to show up. Currently in between satellites, we are looking at a live view inside the Russian International Mission Control Room in Koryov, Russia. Okay, we had a brief LOS. So, in about one minute, we're going to get FOR data on the panel. Once we verify that, we're moving to plane three with KRM. For Denis, can you attach the base initial base point cover to the ring so we will save the time for the future? Sure, I can do that. Hard copy. Loud and clear. How us? Loud and clear. Please check if you see the coordinates on the panel. Yes, coordinates are visible. Thank you. In this case, move to BTL-3. Okay, should I close the panel? 
Оставь его в таком положении. Мы еще с ним будем работать. Negative. Leave it as is. We will work with it later. Okay. Beta L3. Where is that? Okay. I get it. At Denis, please position yourself near TRM indicator such that you can continue operating while we wait for inter internal commands to execute. Okay, Oleg, please check if... Uh, if it's closed, yes, it is closed. So, I don't see the rocket on the launch pad. Yeah, it was closed by the cover, the cloud cover. So, let me get over to this side. It's getting more difficult to walk around here, right, just like on the service module. If you're just joining us, you're seeing live coverage from the helmet cam of Russian cosmonauts Oleg Artemyev and Denis Madveyev. We're two hours and one minute into today's EVA, or spacewalk, where the duo have prime objectives of relocating a control panel and then testing out the grappling mechanism on the end of the European Russian, the European robotic arm. The indicator is in the firm position. The duo have translated to their work site after exiting the hatch at 8.25 a.m. Central Time, 13.25 GMT. They have now installed the control panel at its new destination and are looking to install gap spanners. The duo are about 35 minutes ahead of the timeline and are looking to do some get-ahead tasks, including the removal of some multi-layer insulation. So you're saying the translation from the panel to BTL is difficult? Yes. The, we should have put the gap spanner of 4109. Okay. So... How about we reattach it to make the translation easier? I think it makes sense. At least we could try. So you want it reattached to 4108? I'm afraid the length will not be sufficient, but we will try. Yeah, it was not good, and now it's even worse. You see the opening 
under your right hand. The, the camera is flopping around there. Yes, this is what happens when you translate like this. And that wasn't like this in the Hydro Lab. So, how about this? Once we finish with the panel, close the panel, then you will take time to evaluate the translation paths. It should be from 4127 to 4109. And the alternative would be 4128 to 4110. It's just that these tethers are pretty short. They may not be enough to reach the handrail. Okay. Uh, is it time to start with the error tool? It's so inaudible. And then assess the position should be full meters from the control panel. From era one that is in the center. Copy. That's some bundle. Okay, вставлять в отверстие нельзя. So, make sure. You don't use the service, the install. Uh, no, don't, don't install. Okay. Okay, understood. Uh, we. Does it look like the cover got ripped? Uh, no, it was like that bef before. On the handle. Ah, uh, yeah, so that it was before. Maybe it's not needed, actually. These are the ones that were here before. Yeah, the cover is still here. Artem, can you find out maybe those covers are not really needed on the handrail? The operators believe they are needed. Actually, the other handrails uh, the same kind did not have any um, covers, uh, and those are throwaway kind, paper made. One of them is torn. But the operators say keep the covers. For now, copy. Just waiting for about three minutes.
рукой, Денис, а у тебя руки свободные. Денис. Можешь, пожалуйста, сфотографировать? If your hands are free, would you mind taking a photo of this cover on the handrail, uh, just for further analysis? Uh, no, um, Alex is in the way. I'm on the other side. Okay. Then uh, later, when we wait for automatic adjustment, uh, maybe you will take a picture at that time. If you're just joining us, you're having live operations of the Russian Spacewalk 54A, where two cosmonauts exit the hatch this morning at 8.25 a.m. Central Time, 13.25 GMT. The duo are looking to finish up some work that was started in August on the European robotic arm. The prime objectives were to relocate a control panel and then test out a rigidizing mechanism on the arm that will be used to facilitate the grasping of payloads. So far, the duo have completed that first task where they have um, relocated the control, the external control panel for the European, European robotic arm. They then will have gaps. They're looking now to install gap spanners and move on to their next primary task, which will be to adjust and test the European robotic arm, its end effector and grasping capabilities. Here they're looking to see the strength of that grapple or that hand as it will be used to move hardware and equipment around the module of the R Russian segment. Two of three cosmonauts are outside the station. Expedition 67, Commander Oleg Artemyev in the red Orlin suit or the red Russian space suit with the, the suit with the red stripes and Denis Matveyev, the Orlin suit with the blue stripes. And then there is one more, Sergei Korsakov is inside the ISS looking to help out the duo when it's time to test out that European robotic arm scrapping mechanism. Олег Денис. Нам дано добро переводить ТРЛ в положение флекс. Для этого мы have go uh, to switch TRM, uh, and that is uh, one uh, point uh, five torque uh, counterclockwise. Без фиксации, по-моему, да.
without log wire. Yes, without logging. Let me support. Installing. Okay, it's installed. So, nineteen revolutions counterclockwise. One, two, three, four. So, this one is in front position. Six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen. Now stand by. Artem. So on on the eighteenth we were in place at the nineteenth revolution uh we moved uh, away from the desired point by quarter unit. Okay. Uh thank you for the report. Let us analyze so 18 was exactly in the center. We are waiting to check out at the control panel at this time. Did it change the lens here? Yes. Looks clean. Alex, Dennis, now uh, 19 turns uh, clockwise uh, in firm position. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Okay, got we We got it in the window. And that is at the 9, not 19, at the 17.5. We had shoot LOS, please repeat. Now two hours and 17 minutes into the Russian spacewalk 54A, two cosmonauts are outside the Nyoko module where they are currently using the European robotic arm one tool. No, Alec, uh, more instruction. We need one more turn, so please insert it again. Okay, now, now this paper flew away. The duo is working with Mission Control Moscow to configure the control panel for the European robotic arm. I'll try.
The duo currently is about 35 minutes ahead of their timeline. So, uh, how do I turn? Clockwise. One turn clockwise. Done. Now the indicator is uh, moving away by one quarter from the window. Well, they decided to adjust it a little bit so that uh, it will automatically even out with a given number of turns. Now definitely take out the wrench. Are you sure? Yes, sure. Absolutely. Take it out. Now we'll be checking this in automatic mode. But do not put the wrench too far away. We'll have to make sure that the automatic checkouts will go smoothly. And when we confirm that, you will be able to take away the wrench tool. Copy. We are done with step 24 and keep moving.
The sense is in a flex position now. Then let's take away the era one tool. Are you sure? What's next? Now we are waiting for the indicator to go to firm position. And then you will translate to BTL to base point. How do you think it will be better for you to get there? Please repeat. We are waiting for the firm label to appear. And uh, then you will have to translate to the next work site. Do you want to go via the adapter area or no? I think it's better we go in a straight path. Will you have enough reach? I think so. Now let's confirm that the indicator is showing theorem form label. The indicator is in firm position. Thank you. Now we'll go to the LFM ring. Uh, and the firm indicator is in the middle, mostly in the middle. Not quite centered, but mostly in the, in the center. Maybe one tenth to the side. Uh, static, unintelligible. Unintelligible static. Uh, you will uh, attach the uh, areas uh, that are going to be removed uh, initially. Unintelligible the rest. Okay, keep moving. Thank you.
If you're just joining us, we are two hours and 30 minutes into the Russian spacewalk 54A, where Russian cosmonauts Oleg Artemyev and F Denise Matveyev of Roscosmos exited the station at 8.25 a.m. Central Time, 13.25 GMT. The duo have been completing tasks quickly this morning and are currently about 35 minutes ahead of their timeline. Their primary objectives have been achieved. They have relocated an external control panel for the ro European robotic arm, and they have also began They have also began um, working on the end effector of the European robotic arm. Hold on to the handrail. I am. After translating to their work sites this morning, Oleg Artemyev and Denise Matveyev installed a work platform on the Nyoka module. They have relocated the European robotic arm external control panel, and they have adjusted and have began testing the ineffector grasp capabilities. The bag is uh, stuck. Just a second. That's a good data. On the other side. I will be removing LFM ring. Secure here. Uh, MLI uh, cover will need to be secured first. Done. Copy now, take it off. Okay. Alec, now. Now secure the long uh, wire tie to the eye bolt. The one on the left side. Uh, no, just pull it. The one that you're handing, the one next to the tool. No. I don't think that I can pull it like this. That's it. I think it's uh, now bent pretty well. I see that uh, you have different ones. Excellent, that's great.
That's it. Okay, so uh, I got the wire tie. Now we just have to remove this one. Well, make sure that you secure the ring first using the wire tie. Uh, and uh, also uh, you have to secure the cover uh, using a wire tie. Okay, and uh, also just a heads up, uh, uh, you have a clip coming up in three minutes. Did I tether it uh, here as well? If you're just joining us, we are covering live coverage of the Russian spacewalk 54A. You're currently seeing helmet cam from Russian cosmonaut Art Oleg Artemyev, where he and Denis Matveyev are working on end effector two of the European robotic arm. Are you going to use the regular uh, tool? Uh, yes, actually we can give it a try. Uh, we got it done the last time, like this. Uh, actually, you have a special uh, era uh, tool. Um, so uh, if uh, you can't do it with the ratchet wrench, you can use that tool. Uh, please do not remove it just yet. The duo has installed a working platform with adapters on Nyoka module. They have relocated the control panel to the base point. They have installed gap spanners and they have calibrated the European robotic arm in Defector 2. They are currently looking to remove multi-layer insulation and the LFM ring from the European robotic arm in Defector 1. Some more, I did half a turn. Well, uh, I guess uh, this cover needed to be removed. Okay, so there it goes. Keep going. Great. Uh, I guess uh, uh, this one uh, is uh, and tightened way more than the other one. Uh, we need to uh, tether the ring. Uh, it is uh, already secured. Actually, I removed it. Or so you did. Uh, yes, in that case, it needs to be uh, secured. 
inaudible. So why did you remove it? Oh, because I needed to uh, attach the wire tie and twist it. I had the wire tie had to go through uh, it. Okay. Uh, Can you uh, reach there with your fingers, do it manually, or do you need the ratchet wrench? A ratchet wrench. Can you push it slightly? Let's try this one. No, this is the top one that's rotating. I guess uh, we need to go some more. Let me hold it then. Okay. Uh, go ahead and spin it. Which way? To open, yes, that is... Uh, correct. I think you said it to close now. Okay, well, that's it. Keep going. Uh, keep rotating. It's not moving back, as you can see. Uh, it's not working. The ratchet uh, range is not working. All right, so let's uh, try the wind nut then. Uh, let's use uh, mine uh, because it's easier to reach. Keep pulling. No, uh, actually, no. Can you see? It? No, no, it's not uh, moving. Can you see it? What is it? Okay. Uh, what got stuck? Well, uh, the ring, uh, the uh, safety, uh, the, the ring is in the way, and we can't um, pull out the range. Uh, let me uh, move towards you. Uh, so let me uh, set up there first, and uh, uh, you'll try uh, rotating it. Okay, stand by. Okay, you can give it a try now. Uh, it's uh, not easy to move, but it's moving still. Yes, that's right. Okay, go ahead. All right, that's it. Did you say uh, it's done? Yes, uh, you can take it now.
can you take it? Are you taking it? Y yes, but uh, the uh, chasming here, uh, while well, it's uh, inaudible. Okay. And uh, let's uh, attach an adjustable tether here, okay? Well, uh, Oleg, uh, can you do half a turn for the ring first? Inaudible. Let me help you. I can hold it if you'd like. Okay, so uh, what should we do? I guess the wire tie goes here. I'm holding it. You can hand it over. Like this. Okay, so let's try turning it now. Okay, well, this is better. Now you can take it off. Actually, you can remove uh, yours now, and uh, I'll wait for now. Okay, I have it. Let go. Okay, and you can hold it now. Uh, so, uh, what uh, should we uh, put here, a cover? Uh, yes, uh, you should wrap the MLI cover around it. And uh, where is it? Where is the cover? Okay, there it is. Let's start on your side. Let's start on your side, Oleg. Okay, there, hold it, please. Do you have it? Is it good? Yeah, okay, MLI is installed. Uh, all like, uh, do you have wire ties? Uh, we can actually um, uh, bundle the two rings uh, together in one uh, unit. Uh, well, actually, you should have uh, enough wire ties for everything, uh, to bundle everything up. Uh, yes, uh, and uh, also MLI uh, has been installed, and I still have the wire ties. Uh, I have uh, some wire ties as well. If you're just joining us, we are currently live with the Russian Spacewalk 54A, where Expedition Commander for six, 
Expedition 67 Commander Oleg Artemyev and Denise Matveyev exited the hatch at 8.25 a.m. Central Time, 13.25 GMT. They then traversed to their work site where their prime objectives were to relocate a control panel and to work on the end effector for the European robotic arm. The duo has completed a lot of their beginning task, and they are now about 50 minutes ahead of their timeline. I can hold it for now. Okay. The pair are currently working on the removal and bundling of multi-layer insulation and launch fixture mechanisms. Uh, the ring attached to the end effector and arm for when it launched back in July of last year attached to the Nayuka model module. It is no longer needed and will be bundled. And the team here in Mission Control, Houston, are working with control controllers in Moscow to see whether jettisoning will occur today. Uh, so we just put them together, right? Correct. Okay, we'll get it done. And you can do it uh, on the other side as well. Okay. Okay, uh, should we install one more wire side here? Yes. Uh, so uh, make sure that uh, nothing uh, gets detached, that we don't uh, remove anything. Okay. Денис, у тебя на левом плече. Денис, inaudible on your left shoulder. I don't see it. С камеры Олега наблюдаем. And we are uh, seeing you through Oleg's camera. Okay. Like this. This is better um, because the the uh, second ring uh, is only secured by a wire tie. Okay, this uh, uh, wire tie uh, has been through five uh, EVAs. This one uh, ha uh, has uh, shown itself in, uh, on the battleground, and now uh, they just want to trash it. Do not let it happen. Okay, it's done now. Excellent. So now what? The ring has been removed, okay? And now uh, you'll move on to the protective window activity. First, uh, you're going to do all the operations for the protective window. You'll remove the old one and install the new one. And then we will uh, switch to inaudible. All right. Uh, so we need this camera. Is that correct? 
Uh, yes, is that correct? Uh, one, yes, correct. Okay. Uh, and this is this looks great. Okay. Uh, so I guess we need to secure it too. Okay, Maria, to take it down. Okay. There is no room here. Okay, let me move over here. Okay. Hold it, please. Ready? Ready. Wow. It's not going uh, easy at all. I remember it was easier last time. Okay. Are you holding it? Yes. Uh, and you're not using any tools, doing it manually. Okay, got that. So shall we try it? Okay. No, no, that's it. If you're just joining us, we are about three, we are three hours into today's Russian spacewalk 54A, where Oleg Artemyev and Denis Matveyev have been outside of the hatch, outside of the International Space Station, performing work on the European robotic arm. So far, the planned task, um, the crew is doing well, and they are about 50 minutes ahead of their timeline. They have installed a platform with adapters on the Nyoko on the Nyoka module, they have transferred the control panel and reinstalled it. They have also done work on the Ineffector 2 and Ineffector 1 with the removal of multi-layer insulation and the LFM ring, which is the launch fixture mechanism ring, which is not needed for orbital operations.
we have switched to uh, the SHSS uh, broadband communication system. How do you read me? Hello. Loud and clear. The crew and the International Space Station are currently flying 261 statute miles above China. Last time I was on the other side, and it's not working when I'm on this side. Should we swap? Should we swap places? Well, let's try this. You hold uh, this uh, piece, and that thing. Hold, hold, like this. I let me get this preliminary restraint. I think the MLI is interfering. Or what? What are you saying? The MLI is interfering. Okay, let me detach this. Now move this away. Okay, now it should fit. There you go. Okay. Okay, let me tighten this one a little. Okay, torque wrench. Okay, use error four tool. Error five is also a torque wrench, but we no longer need it here. It will be required later.
Олег, Денис. We are uh, going to lose calm for about 10 to 12 minutes. Uh, we are going to lose video for about 10 to 12 minutes, so please provide voice commentary. Will do. An eclipse in five minutes. Copy. Uh, Insulation in five minutes. Sorry. Okay, error for tool. Yeah. Okay. okay, Denise, where are you? I am right here. Uh, it should be primed for closing. Yes, we, if you remember, we practiced this step. Okay, there you go. Okay, now I, I have to back out this fastener. Are you okay working like this? Yes, it's a little bit short. Say again. Uh, I just need to get back here to keep it from flying away. Okay, this one's ready. Our second one. You ready? Okay, this one's removed. Okay. Uh, protective frame is installed. Copy. MLI is installed correctly. The frame is removed and can be stored in the kit. That has been done already. So what do we do next? Now we will work with TRM. Unstow era one tool and position yourself similar to your last. Ready. Indicators is done. Copy. Now standing by for our go.
Конечно, Олег, Денис. Error people are asking that you do not hold on to the error handrails. They will be doing some arm commanding. Okay. Hands off, error. Error handrails. Thank you. If you're just joining us, we are three hours and 13 minutes into live coverage of the Russian Spacewalk 54A. We had two cosmonauts, Oleg Artemyev and Denise Matveyev, venture outside of the hatch at 8.25 a.m. Central Time, 13.25 GMT, where they have now completed two of their major objectives, which was to remove and replace a control panel from one section to another, as well as um, do some testing for their ineffector on the European robotic arm. So far this morning, the duo have installed work platforms on the Nyoka module. They have relocated European robotic arm external control panel. They have adjusted and tested the European robotic arm's ineffector grasp capability. And they are currently working to remove the launch restraints of one of the European robotic arm's ineffectors. They'll be working with Mission Control Moscow to give them a go on when to, how to set the Indefector 1 into a firm configuration with using the European Robotic Arm 1 tool. Олег, Денис. Олег, Денис, как слышно? Олег, Денис, how do you copy? Go ahead. Сили добро на продолжение работы. We are go to continue ops. You will now perform TRM adjustment slash override. For that, you will insert the tool into the uh, slot and start operating. 19 revolutions counterclockwise.
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. At Revolution 18, uh, the window started showing uh, the visibility, and at 19, it was fully visible. Denise, can you t take a photograph of the arm in this config? I'll try. The photograph may not be visible very clear because of the illumination conditions. Well, uh, whatever you get, uh, we'll be happy to receive. Oleg and Denis, thank you. Oleg, you are go to put it in the firm position, 19 revolutions clockwise, and do not retrieve the tool. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Eight. Okay, the tool is out of the slot. Okay, we did eight turns. So, clockwise, right? Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. You're currently watching live coverage of two cosmonauts outside the International Space Station as they do work on the European robotic arm. You currently see the helmet cam of Oleg Artemyev as he and Denis Matveyev work with Mission Control Moscow to put the end effector one into a firm configuration with the European robotic arm one tool. You'll hear counting as they are going and supposed to have 19 revolutions of their tool. Have two more to do. The duo is working efficiently and suits are working well. They are about 50 minutes ahead of their scheduled timeline. Uh, it's partly visible in the window. You can do 
Okay, now the indicator is smack in the middle. Okay, we are standing by for a minute now. Okay, Denis, we are waiting for the uh, firm state. Okay. Indicator is in the expected position. Copy. Okay. Can you please repeat? So it's in the middle. Uh, it overshot the middle by about a quarter dial. Copy. I think we can stow error one tool. Okay. Stowing error one tool. Since you said so. Error tool is stowed. Copy. Okay, standing by for a couple of seconds. Okay. 
Okay, I see the indicator uh, crossed the middle, but it did not reach the expected position by, by, by about one fifth of a dial. Okay, copy. Denis, can you please photograph this config? And Oleg, we are still standing by. take a selfie as well. Alec, Denis, please turn away from the camera. The laser is about to come on. Stand by, please. We need to uh, move the camera away. Okay, so uh, after you deal with the camera, start translating towards the panel. Okay, I have turned away. EV1 has not turned away yet. Okay, EV1 has turned away. All right. You are now go to start translating. The laser will come on after you leave this area. So, Denis, you go first, go to grapple fixture of the arm, and Oleg, you will be at the external panel. Okay. Am I going to be able to translate over handrail for one to seven? If you're just joining us, we're three hours and 33 minutes into today's Russian spacewalk 54A, where cosmonauts Oleg Artemyev and Denis Matveyev have been outside of the International Space Station on the Russian segment 
doing work to the European robotic arm. The duo are currently translating to the base point of the MLM or multi-purpose laboratory module, also known as NIOCA, with the LFM ring or the launch fixture mechanism ring and the bundles of that multi-layer insulation. Dennis, are you in place? Yes. Stay there, I will come over. That's a gap banner, yes. And the second one, hold on. And one more, okay. So on two. Gap panels, yes. Yeah. Alex? Yeah. When Hira is moving to start mode, maybe that will be a good time to work with the gap panel. How, what, what exactly to do? to adjust the path at your discretion. Well, it is too short, um, unless we put two together. Otherwise, it is short. It, it goes between these two parallel ones, but does not reach the spot. Maybe. 4108 to 4109. Maybe we can do this. That's the option I wanted to propose. Or around uh, the control panel, maybe 4108 and to 4106. Why would that be needed? It will be to go around the control panel. Actually, 4108 to 09 would be the best, probably, to have access to ERA and such. 4108 and uh, 4109, it will take one gap spanner. And the other one we'll be able to attach only at one end. You know, after covering the control panel, we will take another look and make a decision. It's it just that there will be two hooks connected to one handrail. Uh, laser is going to be activated now. 
if you're just joining us, we are three hours and 38 minutes into the Russian spacewalk 54A, where the duo Oleg Artemyev and Denis Matveyev have been outside the International Space Station on the Russian segment working on the Nyoka module, doing up, doing some work to the control panel for the European robotic arm. The duo just translated from one one location from to the base point um, of the MLM or the Multipurpose Laboratory module or Nyoka, where they are now looking to bundle the LFM rings with the protective coverings. LFM is the launch fixture mechanism ring, which is not needed and was removed from the Indefector 1. You can take the retainer and uh, attach it to the grapple unit. Okay. After bundling, the crew is looking to do a crew rest for about nine minutes. The crew can choose to take or move forward into their timeline. The crew has already skipped two rests, so they may take this one. However, the crew is working efficiently and the suits are working properly. The crew is about one hour ahead of their scheduled timeline. And we'll use a small red. Okay, let's take the small one. Release yours. Got it. I got it. Now place the cover. Lock it in. And now you can use the cue card for the rest of the operation. Okay. Alec Dennis laser is going to be activated soon. Okay. Сейчас начнется движение манипулятора Олег. And the arm will start moving now. Okay. And what do we do? Observe. And be in the safe area. You can check uh, telemetry on the external control panel.
ручки, да, на такелажном узле. And the handles on the grapple fixture, right? It currently looks like EV2, or extra vehicular crew member two, Denise, Denise Matveev, has moved to get a head task, and he's now translating to Australia one in effector and removing handles to do the Australia one retainering. EV1, or extra vehicular crew member one, Oleg Artemiev is currently in a rest period. Oleg Artemiev is in the Orlin Russian spacesuit with the red stripes, while Denise Matveev is in the Orlin Russian spacesuit with the blue stripes. And how the handle needs to be oriented? To the retainer after the era. So, uh, facing towards the Strela, uh, and if we are talking about the new retainer.
Включение лазера не смотрено на, на камеру. Лазер был активирован, мы не смотрим на камеру. Окей. I installed the retainer. Ну, тогда размещайся на СПУ. Very good. Дальше на нем будешь ждать Олега. Now we keep moving. You will be away from Oleg. If you're just joining us, we are three hours and 54 minutes into today's Russian Spacewalk 54A. 
Expedition 67 Commander Oleg Artemiev and Flight Engineer Denise Matveyev, both of Roscosmos, exited the station's space facing Poisk module at 8.25 a.m. Central Time, 13.25 GMT. Artemiev is wearing the Russian Orlin spacesuit with the red stripe, you see right there in the center of your screen, while Denise Matveyev is wearing the Orlin suit with the blue stripes. This is the eighth spacewalk for Artemiev and the fourth for Matveyev. Artemiev is helmet cam 16 and Matveyev is helmet cam 20. Today's spacewalk will complete f unfinished tasks from a spacewalk that was started in August, which was cut short after Artemiev's spacesuit showed abnormal battery readings. During the previous spacewalk, Artemiev and Matveyev completed the installation of a pair of cameras on the arm the European robotic arm and remove parts attached to the arm's end effector before the spacewalk ended. The European robotic arm, which was launched last July attached to the Nyoka module, will be used to move payloads and equipment outside the Russian segment of the station, joining the Canadian-built Canada Arm 2 robotic arm and the Japanese arm, already supporting station maintenance operations and research. So far today, the crew has been very effective, and they are about an hour and 10 minutes ahead of their planned schedule. So far, they've installed work platforms on the Nyoka module. They have also relocated the European Robotic Arm external control panel. They have adjusted and began testing on the European Robotic Arm's end effector, or its grasping capabilities. They have removed launch restraints on one of the European Robotic Arm's end effectors. The crew is currently doing two different tasks where EV2 Denise Matveyev is moving forward and straight, the Strela 1 retaining. And that's the Strela Boom where they were going to move one from the to the Poise module. extend one Strela boom from Zarya to the Poise module. Denise Matveyev has started that task while Oleg Artemiev is currently still working alongside the external control panel.
Alec, can you? No. Yes, go ahead. Yes, Artyom. Four hours even you have been EVA. And uh, advising, uh, save the battery for FGB. How exactly? I mean video camera. Video cameras. Save the battery. It still has uh, five bars. You can start recording and get situated next to the control panel. We have about three minutes. Even less. We have a go to keep working with the control panel. Use a cue card with step one. Make sure the indicator will get illuminated and the coordinates are displayed. Displayed. And uh, the uh, toggle switch in the work arm position is the uh, LED for the switch illuminated? Uh, which switch? 
This is uh, the uh, LED next to uh, the m manual switch. Uh, next to the switch, so no, uh, automatic mode is illuminated. Uh, please uh, put the switch to manual. Done. Now let's go back uh, to the cue card. Uh, switch uh, to operate in position. Stand by. Uh, Artem, are you here? Uh, yes, I'm online. Uh, how come you're silent? What step are we in? Step two, switch to operating standby. It is in standby, completed. It's blinking. And uh, did you get the status message? Uh, yes, uh, POC, white start. Okay, it's blinking, right? The uh, LED is blinking, start LED is blinking. Should I press on start? Yes, uh, please press start in set five. Completed. Stand by for 30 seconds. Info dump, yes. Info dump confirmed. SBOP message will come up on the same display next. Send him by. Yes, SBOP grapple message came on. And did you get the uh, standby message and LED should be green? Yes, I confirm all. Please uh, put switch to uh, manual. Uh, or is it in manual? Or it is. Well, actually, uh, automatic mode is illuminated now. Well, in that case, please switch it back to manual. It is in manual. Uh, switch to operate and standby. Confirmed. Standby confirmed. Uh, it is in standby, uh, not in operating mode. So should I put it to operating mode then? Uh, yes, uh, please do so. Thank you. Completed. It is in operating mode now. Step 11. F O R uh, switch to uh, up copy completed. 
And is it let's connect? No, please stand by. Uh, so should I move the frame? If you're just joining us, we're about four hours and ten minutes into the Russian spacewalk 54A, where two cosmonauts, Oleg Artemyev and Denise Matveyev, have ventured outside of the hatch at 8.25 a.m. Central Time, 13.25 GMT. The crew is about an hour and ten minutes ahead of their their scheduled timeline. And currently, the duo is working with MCCM, or Mission Control Moscow, to manually execute operations for the external control panel that they, rem they removed and replaced at a different operating location this morning. I guess I should press start. Yes, that's correct. This is step 22. Arm uh, in motion stop. LED, uh, uh, LED is a blinking uh, LED that's next to um, roll X. Start, start and stop is blinking as well. Should I uh, press and stop and step six? Please check the coordinates uh, and then check again after you've pressed and stop. Okay. Inaudible. You will start in 30 seconds. What step are we currently in? Is it 2 4? 2 6? No, step 26 has just been completed. Switch to step, uh, step 30. Uh, put the switch to uh, stop. Are you sure that step 30 is completed? Because I uh, sent the uh, Rolex uh, command just uh, once. Oleg, we're currently in step 3-0. Well, we did not complete steps 24, 25, and 26. Oleg, you did not complete step 26? Well, I told you that I pressed on start, then I was supposed to check the F or R. So uh, how was I supposed to do it without the command? I apologize, uh, Oleg. I was under the impression that you had got it done. It's blinking now. Well, so uh, we start at the LED uh, in uh, step 24 is blinking now, the roll X LED. So uh, I press on stop, I press on start now, and I'm going to start monitoring the uh, F4 frame now. Here we go. This is step 30, 30. Oleg, uh, we were uh, LOS. Uh, did you say step 30? You're switching to step 30? Yes, uh, uh, correct. I'm pressing on start for step 30. And I see that the coordinates along the ax, uh, axis are changing. Um, I'm turning the page over. I'm now in step 3-1, actually 3-2. Th the uh, LED, uh, uh, the uh, roll uh, LED is blinking for minus x. 
and start stop LEDs blinking, pressing on stop. There's step three, four. Is that correct? Yes. Stop selected. Uh, the raw LED is not illuminated. And the switch uh, per step 36 uh, uh, should be moved up. Up. It's blinking now. Start, stop is blinking as well, and I'm pressing on start per step 39. Your go. Start selected per step 39. Uh, uh, era uh, in motion, and then it stops standing by for uh, the motion to stop. It's dark, and I can see it well. I'm not sure if it's moving or not. It is moving in uh, one centimeter increments, so it's really hard to uh, distinguish that. Correct. The uh, LED uh, is illuminating and start stop LED is uh, blinking. Uh, pressing on start stop for the next step. It's completed. The duo is currently in orbital nighttime, flying 264 statute miles above Madagascar. Step four nine. Oleg Artemiev is currently working with MCCM or Mission Control Moscow to configure and uh, start up the control panel for the European robotic arm. All right, uh, 50, uh, 51. In 52, I'm supposed to press on start. Start selected for stop 52. Step 53, uh, 54, raw LED is blinking, start stop is blinking, and for step 56, I'm pressing on stop, your go. It is completed, for step 56, LEDs are not illuminated, and the switch should be in, let me check. It should be in operating mode. And I guess we, we need to move it to standby. Is that correct? Yes, standby. Okay, uh, switching it to standby. It is now in standby. The LED is illuminated. And uh, please make sure that the uh, cue card is uh, handy. Inaudible. Oleg, we are ready to uh, switch it to the required position. Switch it to external? Okay, I'm uh, getting get my cue card for now. Yes, 
Денис, как дела? Денис, как дела? Как дела? Did you put it back? Пойдешь тоже на стрелу. Тут недолго осталось с пультом. No, actually, uh, I put two of them together. И сейчас будет движение манипулятора, так что в его сторону. Uh, get ready for uh, your motion. Okay. Okay, uh, so should we keep the cue card open? Oh. Well, actually, Oleg, we're ready to um, execute the cue card stuff. Copy. Copy that. So what should we do next? What step in the gear card? Is it the EMMI initialization on the external bus? Correct. Should I turn off the control panel? Affirmative. Uh, turn it off and uh, turn it back on to avoid sending the command. Okay, copy that. I'll put it in work now. I'm turning on the control panel. It is off now. LEDs are not illuminated. And uh, am I uh, turning it back on now, or should I uh, wait? Yes. Say again. Так, три. Включаем питание обратно. Step three. Uh, power to off. O F F. Uh, okay, it is off now, and the uh, LED is off. Moscow is inaudible. External bus configuration, step 11, switch to required position for step 11, copy. And stop is confirmed. Uh, selecting languages. Step 13, switch bus selection confirmed. Stop. Stop. Uh, step 15, stop. Inaudible start. Yes, start for step 17. Okay, moving on. Update menu start. Is that correct? This is step 19? Yeah, yes, that's correct. And uh, press start for step 19.
LEDs are eliminated. Regal data parameters on the display for uh, EMMI1 English. That's confirmed. So step to 121. Step 22. Done. For step 23, uh, please move the start stop switch to start. Copy start. And the start selection is confirmed. All LEDs are eliminated except the LED inaudible. Yes, this one is not on. Шаг 26. Тумблер старт стоп. Положение стоп. Шаг 26. Please move the start stop switch to stop. Stop selection confirmed. Emergency should be moved to uh, the lower position and moving it down per step 28. Uh, yes, that's correct. Uh, down uh, first, and now it's saying that I should release it for step 30, step 30. Uh, yes, move it up. And uh, the LEDs behind the panel, the caterpillar. CPC LED is illuminated. Okay, well, uh, this completes the steps in my cue card. Uh, yes, Oleg, you're done with this procedure. Now uh, we will stand by uh, for a go to continue ERA activities. Okay. Uh, also, Oleg, uh, you should see uh, all the coordinates uh, in your uh, displays now. Yeah. This is specifically display parameters. Yes, I see that. Uh, okay, Oleg, you're going to uh, switch it to still configuration. And uh, first of all, make sure that the uh, brightness switch the, the the switch uh, is moved to okay stand by Alex stand by what uh, what mode do you see on the uh, mode field let me check I see an asterisk s b o p g r Okay, Oleg, in that case, you're going to put it to still config and make sure that uh, you move uh, the uh, switch two times uh, to um, move it down two times. Okay, that's done now. And uh, what I have left here is the uh, power LED. Did you copy? Uh, yes, copy all. Uh, should I close it out? Uh, yes, uh, you are done with this uh, activity. You can close out.
Oleg? Go ahead. So after you close the toll off, uh, please uh, make sure that you extend the uh, slack of the adjustable tether. Uh, make sure that the control panel is not rotating. And also, once again, uh, let's uh, figure out where it would be best to, uh, to route the translation path using the gap spanners. Uh, so, um, um, the I only see one uh, adjustable length tether here, and then um, uh, the other one uh, is fully retracted. Okay, so Oleg, uh, let's uh, uh, assess uh, the best configuration for uh, the new translation path. Uh, okay, let's uh, give it a try. Actually, uh, an uh, adjustable uh, tether is attached to my ring. This is Denise. Okay, so I guess we need to figure something out. If you're just joining us, we are four hours and 32 minutes into the Russian spacewalk 54A, where two cosmonauts, Oleg Artemyev and Denis Matveyev, ventured outside of the hatch at 8.25 a.m. Central Time, 13.25 GMT. The duo then transfers to their work site outside of the Nyoka module, where they are completing work on the European robotic arm. Currently in the orbital nighttime, the duo is heading back to a previous work site where they were doing, they were adding in gap spanners. They had a little bit of trouble with the gap spanners and moved on, and now they're heading back because they have completed multiple tasks ahead of schedule. The duo is currently about an hour above their, they are about an hour ahead of their timeline, are going back to complete the gap spanners. I don't know if I can reach it with this one. I'm going to try. So far, the duo have installed work platforms on Naoka. They also relocated the European robotic arm external control panel. They just completed testing the Euro European robotic arm in effect or grasp capability. They work with Mission Control Moscow to configure as well as start up that control panel. Again, they're currently traversing back to a work site where they will install some gap spanners.
так, ну вот потянулся 41, 28, да, 41. Окей, okay, so I reached for 109. Тогда, наверное, удобнее будет нам ходить. In this case, it would be better to go around. Once you get to Strela, you will need to tighten to wing nuts. Okay. Олег, Денис. Олег, Денис. Go ahead. Там дали добро идти на ФГБ. Работ... You are go to translate to FGB for ops. Хорошо. Okay. So what about this tether? Do we leave it at the panel? Yes. Uh, equipment tethers are to be left. No, I'm talking about a different one. The one for translation. Well, one is going to be configured uh, per hour original design, and the second one will be configured per your proposal. Okay, understand. I think I need the cue card now. Через четыре минуты будет полностью. 
in four minutes we will have inaudible. Copy. Inaudible. We need to do this one. So how, how many turns? Half, half a rev is sufficient. Well, I think I'm getting four revs. Okay, uh, on this one, indeed, it took only half a rev.
If you're just joining us, we're four hours and 47 minutes into today's task, a Russian spacewalk, Russian spacewalk 54A. Expedition 67 Commander Oleg Artemyev and Flight Engineer Denise Matveyev, both of Roscosmos, exited the station face spacing POIS module at 8.25 a.m. Central Time, 13.25 GMT. On, on FGB, we will... Artemyev is wearing the Orlin suit with the red stripes. Matveyev is wearing the Russian Orlin suit with blue stripes. Leave the bag on Today's spacewalk will complete unfinished tasks from a spacewalk in August, which was cut short because of Artemyev's suit showing abnormal battery readings about two hours and 17 minutes into that spacewalk. During the previous spacewalk, Artemyev and Matveyev completed the installation of a pair of cameras on the arm, that's the European robotic arm, and removed parts attached to the arm's end effector before the spacewalk ended. Items at the operator post So far today, the duo has installed a work platform on the Nyoka module, relocated the European robotic arm external control panel. They have adjusted and tested the European robotic arm's ineffector grasp capability. And they are currently going back to a task that put in grapple. Uh, uh, excuse me, they are going back to a task to put in gap extenders. Alec, we're going to have Raticom for about six to seven minutes. Okay, we're moving to gap spanner. Leave crew back there. Affirmative. And uh, the rings will be left on STU. Okay, I'm going to translate to where we will be leaving the rings. Okay, and I will go take care of the crew log bag. Inaudible. Did you test the ring? Not yet.
Okay, did you remove the large one from the crew lock? Yes. I was going to hand you the other handle. Oh, you want to attach it to the new one? I'll put it in this place. Oh, yeah, right. Artem, are you there? Yes. Uh, it's just that the comm is really bad. Shall we bring the second retainer? Negative. Leave retainer in crew lock bag and leave crew lock bag on gap spanner. Inaudible. And the retainer will be accessible. Did you copy? Please say again. A retainer will be left in the crew lock bag. Cr crew lock bag will be <laughs> left at gap spanner between MRM2 and FGB. Oh, I thought we were going to use a different one. No, uh, we, we're we going to do it as we talked yesterday, just like you proposed, inaudible. No, we're going on Strela. Okay. If you're just joining us, we are four hours and 55 minutes into today's Russian spacewalk 45A. You're currently seeing Oleg Artemyev, Oleg Artemyev and Denise Matveyev of Roscosmos. Artemyev is wearing the Orlin suit with the red stripes, while Denise Matveyev is wearing the Orlin suit with the blue stripes. They are currently tying down a bundle of launch restraints and MLI or multi-layered insulation that they retrieved earlier today. They're tying it down to the end of one of the Straya boom, Straya booms. Okay, let's try this. Okay, this ring is secure. Okay. Okay, uh, you're a little bit in the way. All right, let me grab the short one. So I can attach this one. Yes, right here, and I am moving away. Do you want to reattach this one? I think so. Oh, this is better. Excellent. That's a, that's a lot better. Oh, I did a little tumble here. Okay, 
Here comes the second one. Do you, you want me to hand it to you? Yes, please. Okay, you can give it to me. Ready? Yes. All right, here it comes. Very good. Олег. Yes. Выходы у нас, когда адаптер Фадона вы откручивали, там я сказал, что была нештатная ситуация с замком год назад. Вот это как раз тем самым замком, который перед твоими глазами. Олег, did you copy uh, our call about the tray opening incorrectly and this is where we need this latch? Inaudible. So this one is not good. Okay. Yes, we have a feeding fly out of there. But you don't have to pause for it. So now it cannot be removed? Yes, we uh, decided to leave it there forever. I could try and maybe wiggle it around, maybe make a few turns let's think about this after we are done with the retainer okay inaudible that's not easy Can you hold this? Okay. Please watch this hook. Or actually, let me release it and you give it a pull. Okay, excellent. So now we have to secure it on something. There, maybe there's a restraint point in a drum. Sure, why not? Okay, uh, now let me get the second feather. Are you putting it on? So you I think you attached the short one? No, I haven't. So you want me to hand you the short one? Hold on a little bit.
And now the second one. Okay. Wait a little. Let me take this out of here. Okay, now, now you can hand it to me. Okay, watch out. Your legs are impacting the cable holders. Okay, I'll try to be careful. Okay, now we're moving on to the uh, gap spanner. And on to FGB. Yes. Dennis, you need my help? Maybe hand me a hook. It's the short, short one. Here it is. This way. I'm a bit stuck. Like this. Is it? Almost. And these cables just keep translating. Hold on. Just waiting for you. Make sure the camera is in place. Alec. Oh. Alec. Yes. Yes, Kennedy. Oh. I understand that you turned off the uh, pump some time ago. It has been 35 minutes. Uh, and how are you doing? Well. Okay, I just turned it on again, and uh, um, just turn it off again. So uh, make sure you don't get uh, too warm. Um, well, I kind of got heated up now, so it feels good. But make sure it's not too warm, because it will be uncomfortable for you to cool off. So we have not... Uh, bothered you, but um, that's, it's been some time already, so, okay, I'm saving the battery. 
обоих работает отлично в этот раз. All your batteries, uh, both for both of you, are operating excellently. Okay then, then I can use the pump. We have a wire die, and we've been uh, lacking some, so let's gather all the wire dies we can. Sure. There's a barrier or something. Like a cord. Unintelligible. Some hand handrail.
if you're just joining us, we are five hours and 14 minutes into a Russian spacewalk, spacewalk 54A. Expedition 67 Commander Oleg Artemyev and Flight Engineer Denise Matveyev have been outside the ha outside of the International Space Station working on upgrades to the European robotic arm. One of the primary tasks that were completed that was completed this morning was the relocation of external control panel for the European robotic arm, as well as testing out a rigidizing mechanism on the arm that will be used to facilitate the grasping of payloads. The duo has been about 50 minutes to an hour ahead of their scheduled timeline pretty much all day, and they are currently looking to work towards some of the get-ahead tasks. Alec, Dennis? Yes. So while we were translating, and uh, the arm got uh, connected and burst and just cleanly and perfectly. Very good. So our work was not in vain. We'll need to move the gap spanner closer. Let me try. Give me your hook. That's not a very convenient translation path. Just a minute. Temporarily here. We are already close to Strela. When possible, please activate ERCA camera. Are you talking to whom? Probably me. Yes, yeah, mine is on. And check your hooks. Make sure they they good well. Look well. Yes. Turn on Erka. Should be on. So, what did you want to say about the ta uh, the the hooks? Just uh, make sure they are locked well. 
I just want to make sure. Yes, I, I turned on Erka. If you're just joining us, we are five hours and 20 minutes into a Russian EVA, Russian EVA 54A. We're currently in a brief handover between satellites and we'll have those views of the duo outside the space station back to you briefly. The crew has been about 50 minutes ahead of their timeline for most of the day. And they are looking to do some get ahead tests involving the Straya boom. The first one is looking to extend from the FGB or the functional cargo block, um, the Zarya module, to the Poisk module. Shall I? Can I hear? Uh, I think Army. Yeah, that would be bad. Um, oh, you can also use uh, metal handles. So uh, put one hook on a soft uh, uh, gas spanner and the other one on metal. All right. Alec. Yes. Uh, check uh, attachment and it, uh, transportation uh, should not be secured this way. Yes, I am rehooking it. On Stella only the metal uh, handles can be used. Don't use the transportation uh, tellers. Okay. Денис, можешь проверить, пожалуйста, да, страховки СТУ, чтобы она была на балке? Can you check uh, the side of battery connection? Фолксом. Yes, I'm rehooking the uh, tele here. Uh, it has been secured uh, to the handrail.
and this is Trela itself. Uh, shall I connect to handrail rail one and to the Gaspana one? Yes. Uh, use uh, their uh, the first section of the gap span and uh, use a long tether for that. All right. I have the long one uh, detached. Attach now and uh, shoot one to the handle. Now I can see where Strela itself is connected. I am ready to take Australia here. It goes this way with all the links. Make sure that your tether is not getting in in between Strela tethers. Okay. I'm connecting it here uh, to the handle as well. Dennis, this tether is from the foot restraint, right? Yes, it went through the uh, foot restraint to the handle. Was it in a module originally? Yes. Uh, connecting to the handle first. And this is uh, the fixed length uh, tether. How about moving it through the adapter and uh, attach it to the uh, bracket of the foot restraint? And on the other side, uh, from the handle of the uh, trailer, or the gap spanner there. Okay. Okay, so push this through the hand, uh, uh, foot restraint. And, uh, and here it goes on top. Okay, now it is attached. Ready. And uh, uh, adjustable, any uh, adjustable tether in the area? No, I don't see any other one. So, uh, Strela is uh, released from the module, right? Yeah, I don't see it holding it to the module anyway. And Ira is uh, uh, interfering with the structure. No, no, it's not. Денис, 
If you're just joining us, we're five hours and 30 minutes into Russian EVA or Russian Spacewalk 54A. Oleg Artemyev and Denise Matveyev have been outside the International Space Station Russian segment doing upgrades to the European robotic arm. The primary objectives have been completed of the spacewalk. Those primary objectives include the completion, relocation of the external control panel for the European robotic arm, as well as completing tests that tested the grappling mechanism of the European robotic arm. So far today, the crew has installed a platform with adapters onto the Naoka module. They have transferred the control panel to the base point of the Naoka module. They have installed two gap spanners. They have also positioned in Defector 2 and in Defector 1. They removed a launch restraint that was on the end of in Defector 1. They've also tested the operations of the control panel. They have also completed the installation of retainer on the Stray Boom 1. They are now currently into get aheads. The crew has been working ahead of their timeline about 50 minutes, and they're now looking to do the sh extension from the Zarya module to the Poise module from the Straya 2 boom. No, chicken. It's still with a long data. One hook to the ring and the other to the base of Strela. The duo is currently translating to the Strela 2 boom end effector using the translation ring. Once they get there, they are going to tr try to secure the translation ring onto the Strela 2 boom in defector. Uh, uh, that, uh, that one is long. Use that second one. Attach it to, uh, inaudible. Say again, to the handle. To the handle, if there is uh, an eye bolt there. Yes. Okay, so just get it to the handle. Just where the retainer is. Uh, there is a thick uh, ring in the end that can be used to secure it. I see. Okay, got it. To the ring, uh, one to the ring and the other to the handle. That's true. Now let's check. Uh, so one to the, to the thick uh, ring and the handle and we look, looks like we have two uh, to the base of Strela. And that data that is uh, connected uh, connected uh, to the foot restraint, yes. If we figured it out with all the tethers, then we just uh, need to get confirmation and keep going. Yes. 
And when do we have uh, eclipse? In ten and a half minutes, eclipse. Night pass coming up in 10 to 15 minutes, in 10.5 minutes. Are you sure we're not going um, to be at night pass? No, uh, go ahead and get uh, started. Go ahead and list it in pitch direction. Copy pitch. Okay, he's unlocked. Uh, and uh, start spinning it with uh, the following speed, one to two turns uh, every uh, one to two seconds. Make sure that the Strela uh, boom uh, is freely um, moving away uh, from the module. Yes, nothing uh, should be holding it. Also, Denise, can you please turn to the side now uh, and monitor uh, FGB uh, solar arrays and Plane uh, three, and uh, also we're recommending that you turn on the inaudible. Well, actually, no, I can't do that because uh, I need to be holding on to something. Uh, okay, uh, so the uh, solar arrays are nearby, uh, but it's uh, moving nominally. Can you uh, see it? Yes, uh, we're watching it all, guys. And there is some kind of a uh, inaudible. Oleg, what what was that? Uh, I'm saying that uh, there is a loose screw here. Is that the way it is supposed to be? Is the camera on now? Uh, yes, they are. Okay, if you look. In the middle of the frame, uh, you can see the screw that I'm referring to. I'm not sure what exactly it is supposed to hold. Oleg, when you're done with your current activity, uh, please make sure that you uh, take photographs or make a video. Okay, sounds good. Uh, so it should be listed in uh, the, the vertical direction. Well, uh, and it should not be precisely vertical, but uh, yes, uh, move it up. Dennis, how are you? Uh, well, I'm doing well. And th what is it? Th this uh, looks like fishing. Uh, what exactly uh, are we going to catch? Well, whatever we catch will be good enough. This is the largest spinning in the world. Denise, Oleg, uh, if you're going to move past the solar areas, when you uh, start turning uh, in your uh, direction, please report. Five hours and 42, 40 minutes into the Russian spacewalk 54A, Oleg Artemyev and Denise Matveyev have completed all primary tests, including 
the location of a control panel for the European robotic arm, as well as testing that arm and making sure the grappling fixture work properly. They are now moved on to the get ahead task. Um, they are looking to currently extend the Australia, Australia 2 boom from the Zarya module to the Poise module. So, um, I hope it's not raining too much. No, it's uh, just fine. Uh, it's uh, moving very slowly, uh, smoothly. Okay. Do you think we're going to uh, go past the solar array when turning? All right, Denise, how do you read me? Denise. All right, Denise, how do you copy? Alec Denise, how do you read me? So how is it going? It's going well. Audible. How do you read me, guys? Look over here. No, I think it's all nominal with this solar area. So uh, is it going to move underneath the batteries then, Artyom? How do you read me, guys? This is Artyom. Uh, yes, loud and clear now. We can hear you now. Uh, yes, the calm uh, on our end is very intermittent. Okay, so we're going to lift it up now uh, along the yaw uh, direction. Yes, on the right. Well, actually, I think you need to move a bit more. So the Australia boom uh, is supposed to move underneath the arrays. Is that correct? No, uh, over the arrays, over FGB solar array. And between the antennas along plane three. Between the antennas installed along plane three. Correct. So basically, the strela will be between the arrays and the uh, antennas on plane three. Yes, that's what I'm saying, underneath the arrays. So, okay, from your vantage point, Alec, that would be underneath the arrays. I got it now. And uh, we're coming up on a night pass. Uh, yes, uh, 20 seconds to uh, eclipse. But keep going, uh, keep monitoring.
Make sure you're watching closely the solar arrays and make sure that it, that it is moving away safely. Well, so is it uh, aligned? Is it all straight now? Is it as straight as a candle? Well, I'm not uh, sure yet, but I think that uh, you could move it to the left. What about pitch? Uh, pitch is good. Okay. Currently in a orbital nighttime, the crew and the International Space Station are flying 265 statute miles off the coast of Africa over the South Atlantic Ocean. Oleg, Denis, do you hear me? Oleg, Denis, how do you read me? Oh, like Denise, how do you copy? Okay, we can hear you now. We had some minor issues with com, and uh, I'm now uh, on Shesa's channel. Are you still raising the Strela boom, or, or did you switch to the next step? Well, uh, actually, we've raised it already, and we cannot uh, see it that well. Right now, I don't think that uh, we can raise it. Uh, currently in a brief handover between satellites, you are currently seeing the Russian International Mission Control Room. This is a balcony view. But we should have views of outside the station back to you shortly. We're currently seeing a helmet cam from Denise Matveyev, the crew is still doing work ahead, get ahead task, looking to extend one of the Australia Boom, Australia Boom 2 from Zarya to the Poisk module. Denise? 
go ahead. Uh, so uh, you are uh, passed in the solar areas, right? Everything is nominal. Well, actually, from my vantage point here, uh, we are moving along roll axis, and the boom is vertical. Can you see the structure, MRM module, the solar arrays? We need to make sure that as it gets further extended, you can see it all. Well, it's in front of me. I should see it. And we're getting the video that's very dark. So that's why I wanted to clarify that with you. Well, yeah, I see it now. And I'm monitoring all the operations. I think it is clear by about two or one and a half meters. Okay, that's great. Okay, uh, it stopped. Uh, it wouldn't move to the right. Okay, let me back off. Okay, I can see it now. Oleg, uh, please uh, check out the safety tethers. Uh, they may be fully extended and tense, and that's why uh, it's not moving anymore. Okay, let me uh, check that. I don't think it's the case. Audible. 
How are you? Excellent. I can see you. This uh, feels like climbing a on uh, fir tree. It's moving back. I see that it's moving. Okay, what is it? It wouldn't budge. Oleg, can you please check out uh, the uh, opposite side of the strela? Maybe there is something in the way on that side. Okay, let me check that. Okay, I guess I'm supposed to install the retainer to close it down. Is it the correct direction? Yes. And uh, I see that it is um, moved up. Inaudible. Okay, I guess it's fine. Uh, so it wouldn't move at all? Well, actually, uh, I can try using full force. Okay, so let's uh, try to figure out what kind of force uh, you'd need to use here. Well, it was uh, going just fine, and then it stopped. Okay, uh, let me go in reverse so here, using an old trick. Okay, go ahead and do about five turns. Okay. Do you have to use force in reverse direction? No. Okay, so... Uh, I see that it's moving in the opposite direction. Uh, Denise, from your vantage point, can you tell us, uh, are we clear of the structure of tethers or any other elements? Well, uh, I am uh, uh, actually in the straight vertical position here, so I can really say for sure. I guess that's a question for Oleg. Okay. I guess little by little it's starting to uh, move. So how much do we have left? I guess we need, well, let's say about 30 degrees more.
If you're just joining us, we are six hours into today's Russian spacewalk 54A. We're currently in an orbital nighttime as the duo Oleg Artemyev and Denise Matveyev, along with the International Space Station, fly 260 statute miles above Somalia. The crew exited the hatch from the Poise module on the space face, on the space facing side of the Poise module at 8:25 a.m. Central Time, 13:25 GMT. Oleg Artemyev is wearing a Russian Orlin spacesuit with the red stripes, while Denise Matveyev is wearing a Russian Orlin suit with the blue stripes. All primary objectives, including the relocation of an external control panel for the ex European robotic arm and the testing for the, mechani the mechanism on the arm's grasping end effector that will facilitate and move around payloads has been completed. Artemyev and Matveyev have been working about 50 minutes ahead of the scheduled timeline and moved on to get ahead task. Part of a solar array. It's, but, well, what is it? The primary get ahead task is the extension of the Straya boom to from from the Zarja, from the Zarya module to the Poisk module. The crew is currently working and facilitating the movement of that boom. Okay, uh, let's move some more. Okay, well, this is uh, much better now. Oleg, do you uh, feel anything? Uh, well, uh, no, I don't. I don't really f feel anything uh, right now, and uh, I don't think that uh, there is a hazard uh, uh, here. It just keeps extending.
Okay, it's going back now. I think we have cleared the solar array. Uh, can you confirm? It's hard to say, but it looks like it. Let me just correct the reference. Yes, I don't see anything here. I can kind of see it. Artem. Artem. Go ahead. How much is left until inaudible? Three and a half minutes. How much? Three and a half minutes. You said three and a half? Eleven. One, one. Okay, so which way are we working? Pitch. Yes. Continue along the pitch direction. No need to remove. I, I do not see one, two yet. Can only assume. The window is not illuminated. Okay, releasing it now. Okay, give it a pull.
Олег, Олег, uh, Олег. Let's wait until the insulation. I think it's a good idea. As the specialists are suggesting. We only have a few minutes until sunrise. Less than eight minutes. Okay. We'll take a break. If you're just joining us, we are six hours and 12 minutes into the Russian EVA or Russian Spacewalk 54A. Two cosmonauts exited the International Space Station, the hatch of the Poisk module at 8.25 a.m. Central Time, 13.25 GMT. We're currently in a normal orbital nighttime, and the crew is waiting the next five minutes and 57 seconds until the sun rises to finish up a get ahead task, extending the Straya Boom 2 from the Zarya module to the Poisk module. The crew completed all primary objectives earlier this morning, and that included the relocation of an external control panel for the European robotic arm, as well as a test for the rigidizing mechanism on the arm that will be used to facilitate the grasping of payloads. So that was on the end effector, on the end of the European robotic arm, Europe, the European robotic arm, which launched last July attached to the Nyoka module, will be used to move payloads and equipment outside the Russian segment of the station, joining the Canadian-built Canada Arm 2 robotic arm and the Japanese arm already supporting station maintenance, operations, and research. We're currently in a brief handover between satellites, but should have those views of the crew outside working back to you shortly. You currently see a live view inside the Russian International Mission Control Room. You're not too cold? No. Actually, warming up here. That sounds good. Again, if you're just joining us, the crew is currently pausing on that Extraya boom extension from the Zarya module to the Poisk module until they have 
that sunrise. They're about two minutes, 50 seconds away from that sunrise. So they're just pausing right now. Loud and clear. Three minutes until sunrise. How are you feeling? Feeling great. Feeling good. Alec, Denise, how do you copy? Loud and clear. <laughs> Still a bit of interference on the loops, but in 10 seconds, the sun is coming up. And as soon as you can see the modules, please start with your activity. OK. Okay, the sun rises here. And there goes that orbital sunrise that the crew was waiting for as the crew and the International Space Station flew 262 statute mouths above Mongolia. We are now looking for the crew to finish up that get ahead task where they are extending the Straya Boom 2 from the Zarya module to the Poisk module. Where we are sending it? Um, in pitch, along the pitch direction.
Okay, it seems to be going pretty well. I think it's clearing all the structure. Can you turn your camera on, maybe? So, and keep it on? You can set it on your chest. Okay. Going nicely. I think it cleared by 50 centimeters. You said 50? Yes, 50 centimeters is okay. All right. Alec Denise, how are you copy? Loud and clear. I had to get in another headset because I thought the issue was my headset. Com was so bad. Did it work? Well, you heard me, right? When was it last time with we worked with Strela? Well, right now we are doing 54A, EVA 54A. And last time the Strela was operated was on EVA 45A, so reverse order of digits, about four years ago. I understand. It's just that uh, it, it is tight for a while, and then it goes real easy. It is possible that some wires have frozen. Okay. Watch out with legs. Yes, I'm trying to get under this one. Is this going to be enough for you to reach? Yes. And now extend, right? Yes. Okay, we'll, we'll ask Artem. We'll, we'll let Artem know when he is on the loop.
Олег, why did you take the panel out? Say again. Why did you take the tool out? I didn't take it out. It flew out and started flying around. Oh, I see. Copy that. Velcro isn't strong enough. The umbilical is pushing it off the Velcro. Okay, so are we ready to extend? Artem, we were waiting for your go. Okay, guys, we actually need to pick up the pace. Inaudible. Okay, so we start ex extending. Yes, go to extend the boom. After you aim it at the MRM. Well, we are not aiming at the MRM yet. Do you want us to aim it at the MRM right away? Yes. This way, uh, the extension will take you to MRM. First, you have to align the pitch angle to point at MRM2, and then start extending, because otherwise it will be more difficult to lock it in the proper position. If you're just joining us, we are six hours and 30 minutes into today's Russian spacewalk, 54A. Expedition 67 Commander Oleg Artemyev and Flight Engineer Denise Matveyev, both of Roscosmos, exited the space station space-facing space po Poisk module. The primary objectives have been completed for today, which included the relocation of external control panel for the European robotic arm, as well testing out one of the rigidizing mechanisms on the arm that will be used to facilitate the grasping of payloads. The duo are currently extending the Straya Boom 2 from the Zarya module to the Poise module. We currently have motion and movement from one module to the next. It looks like we're not going to be able to point it at the MRM. Let's try extension first. Okay, Oleg. You can Start with the extension, point it to the right and above EV hatch to where the ring is installed. That's where I was pointing. Okay, extending the boom now. Alec, your, is your glisser on? Affirmative. Okay. Okay, passing the AKS antenna. Copy.
I think uh, you are too low when we need to raise you up. Okay, I'm not moving. So now I have to move you up. This boom has a lot of inertia. facing it. Dennis, when you get close to MRM2, in a grapple fixture, probably the foot restraint will need to be turned. I will try, or maybe you can do it now. Okay, I did it just now. Thank you. Alec, uh, now you need to go down on pitch down above progress. Okay, pitch down and to the left, right? Probably. No, not to the left, just down for now. No, a bit to the left as well. You're going down. That is correct. But I see you're passing by. No, no. Probably need to go up now. Well, you are closer. Better view. Uh, this is 133. It is under the target, and there are three cylinders there. Yes. Should I keep extending? Yes. If later at other EVAs you will be removing the restraint from the uh, end effector, maybe it will need to be rotated. Uh, it is being rotated easily at this time. Okay.
Okay. Is it extending? Yes, it is. Please stop for now. Maybe retainer can be moved to the other side, a little bit up. Okay. Okay, it's up. Are you ready? Yes. I believe it needs to be lower. You have a better view. Yes, one meter lower. Okay. Some more? Yes, some more. Sure. Back here? Yes. Maybe a bit lower. Any more? Yes. And you're to the left. Okay. And then a bit lower, pitch down. You see the the boom with some white on it. This is where trail is aiming at right now. Anymore? You're to the left. Stand by. Actually, the if you're just joining us, we're six hours and 42 minutes into today's 253rd EVA in support of ISS assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. Two cosmonauts ventured outside of the International Space Station, the POIS module, at 8.25 a.m. Central Time, 13.25 GMT. Expedition 67 Commander Oleg Artemyev and Flight Engineer Denise Matveyev are currently working on get-ahead tests where they will extend the Straya Boom 2 from the Zarya module to the POIS module. The duo has completed the primary objectives of the day, which included the relocation of external control panels uh, for the European robotic arm, as well as a test that tested the rigidizing mechanism on the arm that will be used to facilitate the grasping of payloads. The, the link. Okay. Let's 
extra. So not to the left, uh, uh, let's try to p pitch. Uh, and then it would be possible to move a little bit less, yes. So now going up, yes, going up. On your screen, you see a great view of the Strea boom as well as both cosmonauts. We see Oleg Artemiev in the Orlin suit with the red stripe, and we see Denise Matveyev in the Orlin suit with the blue stripes. Artemiev is cranking to move the Strea boom to the Poise module, as we have Denise Matveyev at the end trying to do the connection. Is it extending? Yes. The duo moved about 50 minutes ahead of their planned schedule, which allowed for them to have time to get to the get-ahead task. Shifting right again. After the completion of the extension to from the Strea boom to from Zarya to the Poise module, the duo will head back to grab that bundle of protective coverings and the launch restraint rings, and they're going to tie those down. After that, the crew will look to head back inside where we conclude today's EVA. Okay, I uh, keep extending then and then I will I will hold it and then connect to the handrail. Okay, extending. Stop. I would try to secure it. So there are uh, hooks in the crew lock bag. Um, make sure to use it. Yes. They keep extending. No, hold on. Let me secure it against the handle, handrail. Dennis, please return this um, hook and take another one. The one that is connected to the uh, to the handle, and this one return uh, to the eye bolt. Okay. Okay, attach it to 6033. Uh, let me tighten it. Okay. Attach to 6033 and tighten. And uh, how to get off Strela now? Oh, uh, check uh, uh, that 220 uh, tool is not uh, flying around, not hanging. 
and try to remove the uh, handle. Uh, if it is uh, removing easy, then we are good and we will install the retainer. If not, we are not going to install the retainer. Shall I extend or remove? No, not extend anymore. It looks good. Can you go down, pitch down? Just a little bit. Very little. Go ahead. Stop. Okay, then. And how to get off Strela now? Atom. It is not actually giving up by handle. Um, maybe I should use the tool and oh, oh, kind of got stuck. Then let's uh, move down from Strela, get the crew lock bag. Well, I'll have to go through half of Strela. I think you'll need to get to the other side of Strela. Uh, towards 60, 33 handrail. There are uh, circular handrails, and this is where the crew lock bags are. Alec? Yes. And about uh, the uh, the tool. Uh, is it okay? Is it in place? Attached? Yes, it's attached. Okay, now continue movement. I mean, I moved towards Dennis. Uh, we are going towards easy hatch now. Okay. Alec. Alec. Yes. How's your thermal condition? For about 40 minutes, you had the pump going. Yes, I, I did. I did get warmed up. I turned it on. I, I copy. Uh, also, a uh, battery limit message came on. Yes, I know, and 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 that is good. That that is normal. Dennis, uh, before attaching uh, one of the crew log bags, uh, close the close the, the flap first. Okay, let me get that close.
The cool look bag is attached to me. Before moving, Alec, check we had uh, two tellers on tail. Both will need to be removed from Strela Boom. No, don't take it with you. Just uh, keep them in a stove. Okay. And, uh, if you're just joining us, we are six hours and 55 minutes into Russian spacewalk 54A. Oleg Artemyev and Denise Matveyev, both of Roscosmos, exited the station space facing Poise module at 8.25 a.m. Central Time, 13.25 GMT. They completed their primary task or objectives for the spacewalk, which was to relocate an external control panel for the European robotic arm from one operating area to another and test the rigidizing mechanism on the arm that will be used to facilitate the grasping of payloads. Being ahead of their timeline about 50 minutes all day, the duo was able to move ahead to get ahead to the get ahead task, which currently they are completing. That task is the extension of one Straya Boom 2 from the Zarya module to the Poise module. We just had views of Oleg Artemyev in the Orlin suit with the red stripes as he was translating from the Australia, Australia Boom 2 out from Zarya to the Poise module, translating on the trans with using the translation ring. Once he's into the end of the Australia Boom 2 end effector, he will secure that translation ring. Why do we need to take two tethers? Maybe one is enough. The last task of the day will be to get that bundle, the bundle of protective coverings and launch restraints that was gathered earlier this morning, and they're going to tie it down to where it's currently positioned on that Straya Boom 1. After that, the crew will then head back inside, and that will conclude today's spacewalk. What else did I need to do? One uh, tether on STU that needs to be connected to the end effector and a fixed length will need to go through the handle of a trailer adapter and attach uh, to the base point. Okay, stop. Don't give me too much information. Give me little by little. So, retractable. Where do I put it? Attach it to Strela handle. Which handle? Oh, on the last uh, link, yes. I copy. Okay.
Alex? Now seven hours into today's spacewalk, Russian spacewalk 54A. We currently see Oleg Artemyev in that Orlin suit with the red stripes. He's currently securing that translation ring at the end of the end effector on the Straya Boom 2. Uh, towards the uh, solar array of the service module. No, it will be on my right. Okay, I'm looking at the solar array of SM. No, 180 degrees back. 180, the other one, yes. Now a little lower. Towards your feet. This way? Yes. Is there an object there? Yes. Uh, above solar array, there is an object. Can you see this? What What am I looking for? I don't understand the word you are saying. Uh, so there is a, at the at the end of the solar array. Uh, it looks like there is an object. Uh, uh, it's like a little square, right? Or is it antenna you are looking at? No, no, it looks like a free flyer. Okay, this, don't waste time. No, I don't see anything. Let's go back. Okay, the first hook is attached to the handle that we removed earlier, and uh, the second. The second tether, the sixth length via adapter handle uh, to the end effector. Through the adapter handle. Adapter is lowered. The one with the wire tie. Yeah, through that. Copy. How do you read me? I read you. I read you loud and clear. You are already next to EV hatch. I have two requests. First, check if uh, inaudible is available on you. Yes, it is. Copy. And uh, uh, the rings are on the wire ties. Uh, you can use one of the wire ties uh, from uh, from the kit. Do you want me to attach it? Yeah, just uh, make, make sure I attach it to the handle of uh, Strela boom so that they are not uh, flapping around.
to attach to the handle of their base adapter. Yes. No, just tighten through the handle and attach to Strela handle. This is where the previous tether was. Uh, this is. Uh, this will be an attachment to the uh, restraint of the adapter to Strela. No, we already have this done. Okay, good. And uh, what about restraint itself? Yeah, that, that this is the one used to be done. So, Oleg, uh, basically one of the hooks is uh, uh, secured on the handle that uh, at the grapple fixture, yes, correct. And then the second one should go through the adapter handle and should be uh, then uh, installed or uh, secured on the uh, foot restraint bracket. Copy that. Okay, great. And that's uh, um, in work. Oleg, and then uh, please start translating towards the EV hatch. Uh, Denise, how is it going? Well, I'm moving towards the module now for so switch to the circular handrail and uh, basically uh, I just pass the modules and it's not that convenient. If you're just joining us, we are seven hours and eight minutes into Russian Spacewalk 54A, where our Oleg Artemyev and Denise Matveyev have been outside the International Space Station completing upgrades for the European robotic arm, which include the relocation of a external control panel for the European robotic arm, moving it from one spot to the other also testing a rigidizing mechanism on the arm that will be used to facilitate the grasping of payloads. Currently on your screen, you see Artemyev in the red stripes, and you see actually Denise Matveyev is a little bit out of view right now. He is wearing an Orland suit with a blue stripe. Currently, you see the securing of the translation ring at the end of the Straya Boom 2 with Artemyev, and you should see an LFM ring or a launch fixture mechanism ring that that Denise Matveyev has and will stow at the end of the Straya Boom 1. He will use wire ties to secure that to the Straya Boom 1 before the crew heads back inside the Poise module. After closing up the hatch that will end today's spacewalk.
Денис. Go ahead. So while uh, we're waiting for Oleg, and since you are at the EV hatch now, uh, why don't we go ahead and do the audit with you? Sounds good. OTA, swing arm, tool caddy, and consumables. Good. OTA, swing arm, last swing arm. Here, tool caddy is also here, and the trash bag, uh, I have that as well. Glister M unit. I've got that one. Glister is here. Copy. And the tool carry has the uh, era tool six correct. Uh, and now uh, red for glister uh, uh, unit tethering uh, correct. And then another rat for inaudible. It is here. And uh, what about unattached small rat? Small rat? Let me check it. Yes, I have it. And also a small large rat as well. So one small one and another one that's small and large. Yes, with the handle. Copy. Uh, so let's uh, check the crew lock bags since you have them. Well, actually, they're inside already. Okay, well, they're inside. Uh, we're not going to take them out. I guess we can uh, do that at sublimator drying. So we did not retrieve the uh, torque wrenches. So actually, we did. We did retrieve one uh, during today's off. Okay, the cutter was not used. Uh, no, no cutter. Uh, and we only have one retainer. Yes, one of them is inside. Uh, okay. And inaudible should be inside. It is inside the crew log bag. Okay, copy. And the cue cords are uh, in the bag as well, correct? Well, yes, uh, that's uh, the most valuable thing that we've got. Copy. Oleg, uh, please keep moving towards the EV hatch. Uh, it's time for you to go back in. Okay, sounds good. While you're catching a break, we can also do the uh, equipment audit for you. Let's do it. So, okay, here it goes. OTA, swing arm, tool caddy. Okay, I've got all of that. OTA, swing arm, tool caddy. What about Glister unit? Yes, I've got the Glister M right here. Era, tool number six. Do you have it? Yes. What about rats? You should have a, a small, small rat. I've got that one uh, to tether the glister unit. Affirmative. I have that. Uh, do you have the red for uh, era tool number six? Red for tool six? Red for uh, era six tool, so what is it? Uh, okay, uh, this is the Phillips type tool. Okay, okay, I got it. Yes, I have it here. Another rat uh, for tethering ratchet wrench. Yes, I've got that one. And one more uh, small rat uh, for tethering equipment and another rat that's longer, a large rat. Okay. Copy. Also, uh, you had two USOS cameras. 
Where are they? Uh, I have one of them, and then the other one is inside. Okay, copy that. Oleg, are you close to the EV hatch? Uh, I'm on my way. If you're just joining us, we're seven hours and 16 minutes into today's Russian spacewalk 54A. Oleg Artemiev and Denise Matveyev okay, have completed all primary tasks and, are, and just completed one get-ahead task. Oh, primary oh, objectives oh, that were completed today was the relocation well, yeah. of an external control I panel for that. the European robotic oh. arm moving it from one operating area to another. They also tested a rigidizing mechanism on the arm that will be used to facilitate the grasping of payloads. The get-ahead task that the, the duo were, was able to complete was the extension of the Straya Boom 2 from the Zarya module to the Poisk module. The crew just finished tying up the bundle of protective coverings and the LFM ring, or the launch fixture mechanism ring, that they removed earlier, they tied it to the Straya Boom 1, and the crew is now heading back towards the hatch. Unlike a U.S. spacewalk, time begins and ends for a Russian EVA once the hatch opens or closes. So once both of the crew are back inside the hatch and it is closed, that will conclude today's spacewalk. The crew is currently performing tool inspections prior to returning to the Poise airlock. Currently in orbital nighttime, Oleg, Oleg Artemiev and Denise Matveyev, along with the International Space Station, are f flying 266 statute miles above the South Atlantic Ocean. Oleg, Denise, are you facing each other? Uh, yes, uh, it's in work. Getting there slowly. Can you move closer to each other uh, to check out the uh, ore lines? Okay, more. Let Oleg move closer. Okay, how is it going? Going well? Uh, 
inaudible? More. Move inside first. There you go. I guess it's fine now. And uh, you can check my spacesuit now. Okay, well, what can I say? Not too bad. Should I move up? Okay. Okay, that's great. And we forgot about the second retainer. Well, I guess we were told not to swap it. Uh, yes, we aren't going to do that. Uh, please finish up Orlan checkouts uh, and go back in. Okay, so now on to the gloves. Inaudible. Okay. Okay, so what's the status? Uh, do you need to use wipes uh, to clean anything? Well, I guess uh, we could clean out the gloves because they do look uh, sort of uh, con con contaminated. But other than that, uh, it looks fine. Oleg, did you say that your gloves are unclean, or is it for both of you? Inaudible. Okay, copy that. Go ahead and retrieve uh, the towel uh, from the kit that's uh, near the EV hatch. And also do not jettison the towel. Wipe out the gloves and uh, and um, tie it down on the handrail. Okay, copy. Tie it down. Uh, yes, make sure that you make a knot first near the handrail. Inaudible. So it's the handrail here? Inaudible. Uh, you can tie, tie it down later. Let's make sure that uh, it does not uh, float away uh, all the way to the hatchway. 
And he has a bit farther. Uh, so give me this one, okay, here. I'm holding it. Okay, done. Uh, now uh, it's not uh, going to float away anywhere. It's just going to disintegrate at some point. And uh, we need to uh, secure it with uh, wire tie anyways, right? Inaudible. Well, it looks beautiful. Indeed. Copy, Oleg, and please start ingressing the MRM module. Copy. If you're just joining us, we are wrapping up the coverage. Well, sorry, we're about to re-ingress the hatch on the Poise module. So what is it? For Russian EVA or Russian yeah. Spacewalk 54A. Expedition 67 Commander Oleg Artemyev and Flight Engineer Denise Matveyev, both of Roscosmos, exited the station's face, space facing port on the Poise module at 8.25 a.m., 13.25 GMT. They have completed the primary objective of the spacewalk, which was to relocate external control panel for the ex European robotic arm from one operating area, moving it from one operating area to another, and to test a rigidizing mechanism on the arm that will be used to facilitate the grasping of payloads. The duo were, was ahead of the timeline for about 50 minutes throughout the day and was able to get, to do a get ahead task. They completed that get ahead task, which was to extend the Australia Boom 2 from the Zarya module to the Poise module. We currently have live views as Oleg Artemyev has re-entered the hatch or the airlock and we are waiting for Denise Matveyev to ingress as well. Oh, 
Okay. Now let's do this hook. Unlike a U.S. spacewalk, time begins and ends for a Russian spacewalk once the hatch opens and closes. So we'll be looking for the hatch to close before we call it the end of the spacewalk. So now pass the box. Okay, here it is. So let me think where I can put it. Alec, you can activate the sublimator. Okay, I think one of your hooks is holding it. The fixed, fixed length tether hook. Oh, you attached it? Okay. You move to the right. Yes, like this. Yes. And bend your legs. And currently we see Oleg Artemiev helping Denis Matveyev back inside the hatch. Moving him inside the airlock. So, shall we start drying? Drying, eh? Yes. Yes, guys, activate the sub sublimator drying. What about thermal controls? Do we turn it on as well? Okay, I think it's actually working now. So, uh, the switch heat cold, it doesn't matter what position it's in, right? Inaudible. Олег, Денис, ручку тепло-холод, ручную да. поставьте в третье положение на сушку. Олег, Денис, please put hot cold switch to position three. Okay, what about thermal control? You can deactivate the STR. But it doesn't really matter once you're in the manual mode. It makes no difference. So you can just deactivate it. Okay, EV2 deactivating thermal control. Oleg Denis, go ahead. Turn off 
hacker cameras and after that proceed with the removal of protective rings and in Moscow it's already September 3rd by the way already who would have guessed Hey guys, don't forget to turn off the hacker cameras. EV2 hacker are off. What did you turn off? The hackers. Oh. Mine is still working. Okay, I'll turn it off now. Can you reach it? Let me help you. Okay, it's off. Hacker cameras are off. Copy. Now start with inaudible. Okay, protective ring, protective ring. Listen. Why don't we do the box first? Because it will not let us store the cameras. Let me hand you a hook. Oh, where would we put this? Okay, hold this hook. Okay, so the config is nominal. Copy. Inaudible. Okay, so now we do the ring. This lock is not easy to operate. Okay. Let's fold it. I'm standing by for your report about removal of the protective ring. We know, we know. In work. Okay, I got the second one. Good. 
Так, сушка ТО норма. Окей, сушка ТО, ТО драйнг из номинал. Ивито уже имел это. Да, ground confirms. Ивито уже имел эту индикацию. Олег, Денис. Олег, Денис. Как дела с защитным кольцом? Как дела с защитным кольцом? Защитный кольцо демонтировали. Защитный кольцо демонтировали. И мы сейчас закрываем его для закрытия. Копия. Надо осмотреть перевалочные поверхности люка. После этого вы will have to inspect ceiling surfaces on the hatch. Okay, so we're looking at the seal here. Please report this condition of rubber seals. Are they nominal? Yes, they are nominal. Copy. Please proceed with closing the EV hatch. Okay, attaching. Safety to panel two zero one. Copy two zero one.
Денис. Yes. Денис, how do you copy? I copy you. There is a little bit of noise. It's time to do the EV hatch cover. Okay. The handle is installed in Audible. Copy handle installed. Did you start uh, rotating? Yes. I'm trying to get into a position for this. Copy. Talking over each other. Okay, standing by for the report about handle operation. Okay, pressing. Okay, good. Okay, rollers are passing behind the tabs. Inaudible. So is it working out? Yes. Okay, the hatch is closed. Copy. EV elapsed, EVA elapsed time. Six hours, 47 minutes, 30 seconds. Congratulations on the successful EVA. You completed more than you set out to do. Very productive. EVA, tomorrow we'll do a debrief. Wait, did you say 647? Yes, 647. Guys, thank you very much. I am handing over to Dima for a repress. Thank you so much for your great work today. It's, it's been a pleasure as always. Good luck with the press. Thank you. We'll talk to you later. Oleg, Denis. Oleg. Denis. Inaudible. Mine is showing 754. Mine is 755. And actually, the EVA time was not 6 hours 47 minutes. It was 7 hours 47 minutes. You say 747? Yes. In, in my book, it's 747 or 748 even. Oleg, Denis, this is Dmitry for repress. We are ready. We are ready. Talking over each other. Use the repress procedure in the EVA book. Okay, let us turn around. Sergey, for Dmitry, are you ready to support the repress? Okay, we have the repress procedure handy. Copy. Oleg. Section 10, step 4, start on my go. 
Copy. Step four. So after 6.10, we execute on your go. Okay, I am in place. Perhero hatch is closed. Copy that, Sergey. Alec, if you're ready, you can start step four. MRM-2 repressed to 260 millimeters from Pechero. If you're just joining us, we just wrapped Russian EVA or Russian Spacewalk 54A with an elapsed time of seven hours and 47 minutes. The hatch closed on the POIS module at 4.12 p.m. Central Time, 5.12 p.m. Eastern Time. Expedition 67 Commander Oleg Artemiev and Flight Engineer Denise Matveyev completed all primary objectives of the spacewalk, and they concluded one, they also completed one get-ahead task. The duo was able to install a platform with adapters on the Naoko module. They also transferred the control panel for the external control panel for the European robotic arm and connected it to the base point of the Nayoka module. They also installed two gap spanners. They overrid two end effectors, end effector one and end effector two. They also tested the grappling mechanism on the end of the European robotic arm and they installed the Straya Boom 1 retainer. They could have had a task that they completed was the Straya 2 extension from the Zarya module to the Poise module. The crew is currently inside the airlock and beginning repress operations. Copy. Pressure in the compartment 130 in suit 02. Copy. Pressure in compartment 160, pressure in suit 016. Copy. Compartment pressure, 200, pressure in suit, 0, 1, copy. Compartment pressure 230, suit pressure 006. Copy. When pressure reaches 260, we will close KVD PHOSU pressure equalization valve. Okay.
Compartment pressure 250, suit pressure 003. And for EV2, pressure 004. Copy. Two six zero in the compartment, zero zero two in suit. It close. So pressure equalization valve indicator is off. Alec, please report mana vacuumeter reading in MRM two. 265, copy 265. Sergey, what is the PHO pressure per mana vacuum meter? PHO pressure 291, copy. Okay, while we are waiting for the pressure to equalize, uh, please continue executing cue card 11, transition to station power. Copy. Alec, cue card 11. Step six, we start with the co combined tank pressure. Okay, what are we doing here? For MRM uh, two, get BK two in. And Denise, this is sufficient. You don't have to check the others. You can press on. Okay. Okay, umbilical connector connect to the suit. Okay, uh, first make sure that the switch is in the position for the next step. Complete. Okay, now attach umbilical connectors to the suits. You can help each other. Okay, I got one. Okay, now hand me the second one. Okay, ready. So what do we have next? So both umbilical connectors are mated to the suits? Okay, um, heat exchanger mode is coming on? Yes. Electrical umbilical at attaching to the suit. 
Correct. Did you have the electrical umbilical? Yes, it's right here. EV2, electrical, connect, umbilical connected. Copy. EV1 connected. Okay, Oleg, please uh, check the current pressure per mana vacuumeter because five minutes have elapsed. Pressure is 264. Okay, copy. Let's press on. After umbilical, umbilicals are connected. Operate the table SK1, SK2. So we first turn off the power on this one and then turn it on. Yes, transition to station power. Uh, if you're just joining us, we are wrapping up the 253rd spacewalk for the International Space Station, Russian Spacewalk 54A. Expedition 67 Commander Oleg Artemyev and Flight Engineer Denise Matveyev, both of Roscosmos, concluded their spacewalk at 5.12 p.m. Eastern Time after seven hours and 47 minutes outside of the International Space Station. Artemyev and Matveyev completed their major objectives, which included relocating an external control panel for the European robotic arm from one operating area to another and testing a rigidizing me mechanism on the arm that will be used to facilitate the grasping of payloads. In addition, the duo extended a stray of telescoping boom from the Zarya module to the Poise module. Okay. That's what we got. So I'll let you transitioned as well. Affirmative. Okay, copy. This was the 253rd spacewalk in support of ISS assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. On, this was the eighth the spacewalk out of the ISS this year, the fifth button. spacewalk during Expedition 67. This was the eighth spacewalk for Artemyev's career, totaling 53 hours and 32 minutes. This was the fourth yeah. spacewalk for yeah. Met Fayev's yeah. career, totaling 26 hours and seven minutes. And today's spacewalk, again, lasted for seven hours and 47 minutes. And we'll keep monitoring. And Sergei's uh, stabilization is uh, coming to conclusion slowly. And with that completion of today's task and the crew being back inside the hatch and airlock, we will conclude today's broadcast. Thank you for watching. This is Mission Control Houston.
So I think it really depends on the individual person. For my last mission, um, you, well, let's just say there are a bunch of different things going on when you get back to the Earth. And, and uh, for one thing, your inner ear that helps you with balance, um, you feel a little dizzy. Your inner ear is a little messed up. Uh, the vestibular part of your brain is, is a little messed up because now it's sensing gravity again. And that takes about two weeks to go back to normal. Um, our muscles, our bones, our bodies are not used to... Uh, to gravity, and so for me, holding my big head up on my neck, uh, my neck has not had to do that for six months. And so when we get back to the earth, my ne your neck is sore, your low back is sore, uh, your your feet are sore because again, they're not used to holding your your body up. Um, that all gets better in about 30 days. So in about a month after you get home, you're feeling pretty much back to normal. We at the museum would once again like to thank NASA and the astronauts aboard the International Space Station for making today's program possible. We would also like to thank the audience joining us, as well as all the students and families involved in filming prior to this program. May you continue to find inspiration in space, science, and learning. We look forward to seeing what comes next for humankind and space exploration and hope some of you will be the astronauts making that happen. And uh, we would just like to say thank you to all of you, our friends at uh, the Denver Museum of Nature and Science, to Kate and Jessica and everyone who helped put this together. Thank you to the parents and, uh, and especially thank you to the students. Uh, we hope that uh, you had fun. We certainly did. And we look forward to you continuing to explore uh, there at the museum, but also on your own, reading about science, technology, engineering, and math, reading about spaceflight. And uh, we hope that some of you will uh, come and join us and explore with us at NASA someday. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications. Mr. Chair of the Examination Commission, the prime crew of the ISS long-term expedition has arrived for their final examination simulation training on the Russian segment. This is Crew Commander Sergei Prokopyev. How's your mood? Um, very determined. Excellent. Please choose your scenario. The others have to sign as well. So, Sergey, just use the radiograms and the crew procedures. You'll be fine. Just do what you were taught to do. All right, good luck. Sergey, this is a very unusual crew configuration. There are three seats in Soyuz, and you are four. Why are you taking this exam? 
uh, in this configuration. This is not unusual at all. In fact, for the ISS, it's a short crew, like a small crew. Uh, there are seven on, on board the station, so we are kind of understaffed today. I believe that the four of us can do a lot more uh, than the three. Right, so the more people, the fewer mistakes you'll make, kind of. Together with crew just a few months ago, and uh, uh, not a lot of time is spent together. Uh, do you think that this time is enough just to catch up and uh, work as a team and, yeah, to build a team? Uh, actually, absolutely, yes. Um, we have a great team, and uh, we have a great uh, team of instructors both here in Roscosmos uh, in, in, and in NASA. And so uh, I feel like they've absolutely done a terrific job of getting us ready, and uh, we look forward to completing this mission. So please, thumbs up. One more time. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair of the Examination Commission, the main crew of Soyuz MS-22 vehicle has arrived to participate in the examination simulation training. This is a crew commander, Sergei Prokopiev. So you feeling well? Yes, we are great. No hesitations, right, in picking your scenario. Oh, we would like to pick the best one. Thank you. Do you have any questions? No, thank you. All right, good luck. When I ask you questions, please look ahead, not at me. All right. Uh, all assignments are de decided by NASA, but I'm incredibly uh, glad to be here, and this is a great crew. I couldn't ask for a better crew. Do you have any kind of experience that helped you to perform well as a crew? Uh, yeah, I, throughout my life I've had uh, great team experiences. I've always been lucky enough to be a part of great teams, and uh, this is one of the best. Sure. <laughs> Your other hand. Thank you. 
полетели. Thank you, and uh, off we go flying. Mr. Chair of the Examination Commission, the backup crew for the increment 68 to the International Space Station has arrived for their final examination simulation training on the Russian segment. This is Oleg Kononenko, backup crew commander. Please speak your scenario and sign. All right, good luck to you. It's not a long time ago that you knew that uh, you are going to be in this uh, crew. So are you comfortable being in this crew? Do, did you have any st stress when you uh, understand that you are in this crew? Uh, no, not at all. Uh, we've been training together for a couple months now, and we've gotten to do Russian segment training, we've gotten to do Soyuz training, and um, it's been uh, very interesting and an honor to be a part of this crew. Okay, let's go. I believe we should mark those spots with a cross so we know where to stand. Please look at me and please wave. Thank you. Thank you. 
Mr. Chair of the Examination Commission, the backup crew for Soyuz MS-22 vehicle has arrived for the final simulation training on Soyuz. How are you guys? We are well, thank you. Thank you. Could you do the snowball with your hands? I would like to avoid that. Thank you.
I call it the 10% rule. You gotta be 10% smarter than the thing you're trying to operate. My name is Greg Carmouche, and I'm here to test rockets. We supply helium, air, nitrogen, and hydrogen so that they can use them while they're testing the rocket engines on a big stand. We have four compressors. Each compressor puts out 400 standard cubic feet per minute, and we send that to the test site. I'm a mechanical engineer. I did a lot of mechanical things besides go to college. I mean, I worked on my own cars, heating and air conditioning work. I was familiar with electricity. First time I walked out on the engine jack and looked at a space shuttle main engine, I said, man, it was overwhelming, you know? Eventually, you know, you stick to it and I was able to pick it up. The folks that work here are awesome. There's a wonderful group of men and women who keep this place up and running. When you're here as much time as we are, this is places like family. Being a part of the SLS program is it's a life event, you know. This is going to be the culmination of all that hard work that everybody put in years ago. Mr. Chair of the Examination Commission, the prime crew of the ISS long-term expedition has arrived for their final examination simulation training on the Russian segment. This is Crew Commander Sergei Prokopyev. How's your mood? Um, very determined. Excellent. Please choose your scenario. The others have to sign as well. Okay. 
So, Sergey, just use the radiograms and the crew procedures. You'll be fine. Just do what you were taught to do. All right, good luck. Sergey, this is a very unusual crew configuration. There are three seats in Soyuz, and you are four. Why are you taking this exam uh, in this configuration? This is not unusual at all. In fact, for the ISS, it's a short crew, like a small crew. Uh, there are seven on, on board the station, so we are kind of understaffed today. I believe that the four of us can do a lot more uh, than the three. Right, so the more people, the fewer mistakes you'll make, kind of. Just a few months ago, and uh, uh, not a lot of time is spent together. Uh, do you think that this time is enough just to catch up and uh, work as a team and, yeah, to build a team? Uh, actually, absolutely, yes. Um, we have a great team, and uh, we have a great uh, team of instructors, both here in Roscosmos uh, in, and in NASA. And so uh, I feel like they've absolutely done a terrific job of getting us ready, and uh, we look forward to completing this mission. So please thumbs up. One more time. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair of the Examination Commission, the main crew of Soyuz MS-22 vehicle has arrived to participate in the examination simulation training. This is a crew commander, Sergei Prokopiev. So are you feeling well? Yes, we are great. No hesitations, right, in picking your scenario. Oh, we would like to pick the best one. Thank you. Do you have any questions? No. Thank you. All right. Good luck. When I ask you questions, please look ahead, not at me. All right. Uh, all assignments are de decided by NASA, but I'm incredibly uh, glad to be here, and this is a great crew. I couldn't ask for a better crew. Do you have any kind of experience that helped you to perform well as a crew? 
Uh, yeah, I, throughout my life I've had uh, great team experiences. I've always been lucky enough to be a part of great teams, and uh, this is one of the best. Sure. <laughs> Your other hand. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, off we go flying. Mr. Chair of the Examination Commission, the backup crew for the increment 68 to the International Space Station has arrived for their final examination simulation training on the Russian segment. This is Oleg Kononenko, backup crew commander. Please pick your scenario and sign. All right, good luck to you. It's not a long time ago that you knew that uh, you are going to be in this uh, crew. So are you comfortable being in this crew? Did, did you have any st stress when you uh, understand that you are in this crew? Uh, no, not at all. Uh, we've been training together for a couple months now, and we've gotten to do Russian segment training, we've gotten to do Soyuz training, and um, it's been uh, very interesting and an honor to be a part of this crew. Okay, let's go. I believe we should mark those spots with a cross so we know where to stand. Please look at me and please wave. Thank you. Thank you. 
Mr. Chair of the Examination Commission, the backup crew for Soyuz MS-22 vehicle has arrived for the final simulation training on Soyuz. How are you guys? We are well, thank you. Thank you. Could you do the snowball with your hands? I would like to avoid that. Thank you. Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We are ready for the event. Houston ACR, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Houston ACR. How do you hear me? Houston ACR, our station has you loud and clear. How us? Sound great. Please stand by for opening remarks. Hello and welcome. My name is Standing Kate Knapp, and I'm the Virtual Programs Coordinator for the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. We are thrilled to have you joining us today as we connect live with the International Space Station. The cosmos has long inspired humankind, and today, the chance to speak to astronauts living hundreds of miles above Earth's surface is just a further testament to how far human knowledge and science has come. 
In preparation for today's program, we had students and potential future astronauts from across Colorado pose questions for the scientists aboard the space station. In a matter of minutes, these questions will be answered live. And so, without further ado, we would like to thank NASA for this incredible and unique opportunity and turn the program over to them and, of course, the International Space Station. My name is Anna Eason. How do you become an astronaut? Thank you for that uh, question, and uh, I just want to say uh, uh, at the very beginning here um, how delighted uh, that uh, Jessica and I are to join you all at the Denver Museum of uh, Nature and Science, um, and we thank you for this opportunity. How do you become an astronaut? Um, I think uh, the bottom line, it requires hard work, but uh, if you are a pilot, you need to have a thousand hours of, of flying time in high performance aircraft. And uh, many of our pilots come from the military, from the Air Force, Navy, uh, Marine Corps. And then if you are a mission specialist like, uh, like Jessica and I, you need to have an advanced degree. You need to study extra hard. And, uh, um, and it, that degree needs to be in the areas of uh, science, technology, engineering, or math. Uh, Jessica is a geologist. I'm a uh, physician. Position, and uh, we both, uh, uh, it's an extreme honor and privilege to, to get to serve our country in the capacity as an astronaut. Hi, my name is Annabelle. Where does your water come from? Yeah, great question. So we have um, amazing technology on board the International Space Station, um, which we actually are able to apply on the Earth as well, um, and we'll be using in the future as we explore further and further into the solar system. Um, but that technology allows us to use the moisture that's in the air um, and from our bodies and recycle that um, water and turn it into drinking water. And so we are at the point where we are able to recycle about 95% of the water that, um, that we produce here on station, um, which is amazing and is going to be super helpful for us when we start going out to the moon and eventually to Mars, where we won't be able to resupply with water from Earth as easily. And so it's a really important technology to be able to create uh, drinking water. And so we end up at the end of the day, we end up with water that can go into a drinking bag, like the one that Chell is showing you here, and uh, create water for us to drink. It's delicious. My question is, how do you sleep in space? So I'm still recovering from the water question. Um, how do you sleep in space? Well, the easy answer, I think, uh, for me is really, really well. And uh, we sleep in sleeping bags. Our sleeping bags are on our crew quarters, which are actually just behind us here. And uh, I have my sleeping bag just tethered to the uh, crew quarters with one cord. And when I get into it, I will get into my sleeping bag. And then I'll just float around in my sleeping bag inside my crew quarters. And uh, for me, it's like sleeping on a cloud. I'm Addie, and my question is, what is your favorite thing about being in space? That is a tough question um, because being in space is awesome. And so I actually have two answers. My first favorite thing about being in space is getting to see the Earth. Uh, so getting to look out our window and see the Earth uh, rotating beneath us, getting to see everyone we know, everywhere we've ever been, um, just, and we get to see that. Uh, 16 times a day. So the Earth um, rotates. We get to see 16 sunrises and sunsets every 90 minutes um, up here from the International Space Station. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, and my second favorite part about being in space is getting to be up here with my friends. Um, we have amazing crewmates. There are uh, four of us here in, on Crew 4, Chell, myself, Samantha Christopher-Reddy, who's working hard behind us, and uh, Bob Hines, who is um, working hard over here here. Um, and so getting to work with them as well as our Russian colleagues um, is just an absolute honor and privilege. Hi, my name is Gabe and um, my question is, what does it smell like in space? <laughs> 
Hey Gabe, that's a that's a great question. And when I, this is my second mission, and when I got back to the space station, um, it smelled just like I remembered it. And that is uh, the the smell of space. So once we have a, a vehicle, a, a spacecraft that is docked with the space station and has just been exposed to outside, or when we bring a spacewalker back into the um, into the space station, it has this kind of a burnt metal smell. And so every time we open a hatch and and uh, or are welcoming a new spacecraft, you smell that smell, and that has a very distinct smell, and I've never really smelled it uh, back on the Earth, and so it was really cool to get back here to the space station and to experience that smell again. Hi, my name is Ibrahim, and my question is, what if debris damaged the space station? That's a really good question. And actually, there is a whole team of people on the ground who are fully focused on the answer to that question and really to avoiding that scenario um, for and keeping us safe up here on this International Space Station. Uh, so that team is looking out for any pieces of debris or any particles, satellites, anything in space um, that might be have a similar trajectory um, that would intersect with our trajectory up here on the ISS. And if that uh, looks Looks like that might be happening, then there, there are several things that we can do. Um, the main one being that we can just change where we are. So we can change our orbit, and that way that deconflicts us from anything that might be on a similar pathway so that we don't end up colliding. So we are super grateful um, and super reliant on a whole team of people that keep us uh, safe, and, safe and productive and happy up here. My name is Dara, and my question is, what would happen if your tether broke on a spacewalk? That's a, it's a really good question. We have to be very careful when we're doing spacewalks, and so we spend out hundreds of hours practicing spacewalks in the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory back in Houston. And that's, uh, we learn how to be very careful about using those tethers. And so hopefully what would happen is that we'd be holding onto a handrail and we'd notice that that tether broke. And uh, so we would stop using that and, and start using a different one. Um, if for some reason we were not holding onto the space station at the time and our tether broke, we have another tether called the safety tether that is holding us to the space station. If both of those tethers are broken, we have one last safeguard, and that is that we have a jetpack on the back of our spacesuit called the Safer. And this is a uh, essentially cold gas uh, jets that we have a controller to fly ourselves back to the space station, and we actually practice doing that using virtual reality back at Johnson Space Center. We have great trainers on the Earth that prepare us for all of those um, possibilities, and so we're very grateful for that training. Can you show us a backflip in, in space? 